following is a GNC podcast production. Welcome to Geek Addicts, a pop culture podcast. Hello and welcome to Geek Addicts, the pop culture podcast. My name is Matt and with me is NASCAR enthusiast Bill Barber. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing good. It's (laughs) funny because I have an IndyCar hat on today, so it just makes it even funnier. Um, I'm I'm trying trying to mix it up every time I do it. Just, you know, keep it fun. It's better than me, where I don't even know what show I'm doing half the time. So. <laughs> well, at least you have an excuse for that. Makes sense. All right, I started 3DO like a like a couple of weeks ago, and I did the GNC intro, and I was like, "Fuck, <laughs> what, what show have I been doing?" <laughs> That's too funny. Uh, uh, I do want to make a um, uh, a quick correction to something I said. I, I think it was two weeks ago uh, when when I was going on my whole Taylor Swift rant. Uh, I was fucking up my units of measurement. It was it was. I think 300,000 tons was the actual amount, like measurement I was going for. And for some reason, I could not find the words that day. So that's all right. I'm sure <laughs> the people that I'm sure the people that really cared have probably stopped watching after listening after that anyway. So yeah, whatever. Uh, There's one of those things is like, at, like, you know, um, like not like a weird thing. I, I am just uh, I am still new to podcasting, so I do listen to our episodes every week just to kind of get an idea of what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, blah blah blah. And as soon as I heard that part, I was like, "Fuck! I know exactly what I was trying to say now." <laughs> yeah, no, I know that feeling. Like when I, I'll I'll re-listen to like a few of these every now and then, and I'll I'll hear my something I said of like, "Why did I say that?" <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yeah, it happens. So, what have you been up to throughout the week? Uh, this week's been pretty suckish. It's just typical. The company I work for is like really poorly ran. Like they they were like freaking out that they were behind. Like we were backed up on work, and then we actually looked at it and we were not even close to being backed up. They're just overreacting mm. to everything. You know, typical stuff like that. Yeah, I deal with that kind of shit on a daily basis in my work. We had um employee appreciation day today. Oh, we do. <laughs> Must be it. Must be a national thing. Um, must be. And the funniest part is, someone was like, "Hey, it's Employee Appreciation Day," and I just like, across the shop let let out a sarcastic, "Ha!" Ah. And then um, <laughs> everybody in the shop just laughed. Our, our, <laughs> so all the managers got bonuses. We got ice cream sandwiches. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, that I forgot That's to grab right. when I that I forgot to grab when I when I left. So I didn't get an ice Bummer. cream sandwich. Bummer. Well, because they were in the freezer, and I'm like, I'm not going to grab one now. It's going to melt. So I'm like, I'll grab one when I leave. And then the second 3 o'clock hit, I'm like, fuck it, I'm out. And I just left. <laughs> and I'm like, I got halfway up the street. I'm like, yeah, I didn't want one that bad at least. anyways. They're not that expensive anyway. No, they, they bought the, uh, I, I know the exact brand they bought, because I see them at the grocery store all the time. I bet. <laughs> I, I made some decent progress this week with some of my, my nerd stuff. Um, I am I, I'm a stone stone's throw away from finishing Final Fantasy two. Um, nice. I, I just beat the 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 like Dark Emperor guy, and then I, I don't remember the name, but Maria's brother in the game um, just took the dark the Dark Emperor throne. So now I got to go kick his ass, and then I'm pretty sure the game is done after that. Nice. Um, let's see, I. I caught up to the dub for the that new Kenshin remake. Oh, nice! And it, it's pretty good. I, I've enjoyed it a lot. Um, Is it like more? Ac- it's pretty much an accurate manga telling, right? From what I, I haven't read too much of the manga, well, I've only well, read the, the first couple of chapters. Um, but from what I can tell, it definitely is. Uh, I've definitely noticed a lot of differences between the old anime, um, like uh, the whole. I don't know if you remember uh, Raijuta. The, mm-hmm. the big dude with who had like the the air pressure attack with his sword who would like yeah. um he was like training the kid yeah that yeah. that whole thing like that still happened but it played out a little differently ultimately pretty much ended the same way but um i know like pretty much all the filler was cut out pretty much mm-hmm. 
uh, I mean, obviously, like the the animation quality and the quality of the acting was significantly better. Although a lot of the characters, I like the older voices. And well, yeah, Richard Castano is just like that. That that's just Kenshin's voice. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't mind the the change in Kaoru because her voice is kind of annoying in the original. Well, to and, be um, fair, her her voice actor actress couldn't really do the voice anymore because she's so much older now like yeah. she's playing she's playing comey's mom now so mm. yeah so, i mean me in hindsight she definitely improved as an actress over time but you know the original kenshin dub wasn't exactly impressive no. um <laughs> but uh i i'm not 100 i didn't look into it but i'm pretty sure the kid or whoever i say kid the person who played yahiko in this new version i'm pretty sure is the voice of boruto i i'm i i'm not sure because that's one of the few voices that's unconfirmed mm. um because the theory is it's also the uh uh what's her name it's uh a lot of people theorize it's uh the the the, the lady that played um Ella and yashahime mm. um she was also uh in uh kill a kill she was the main character in kill a kill I gotcha. It just it sounded very Boruto to me, so I'm pretty sure it's the act, the actress who plays Boruto. Yeah. I think it's a girl, right? I, it is. I'm, I'm forgetting her name. It's one of the. They're both uh, both the the believed uh, the theorized actor. Both of the theorized actresses are um, female. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the only other voice that I'm having trouble getting used to is Sanosuke. I don't know what it is. It's just the voice uh, in the media blasters dub just fits with him so much better. In my oh, opinion. Lex, Lex Lang, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah he's Neo um, Cortex now. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. Um, and then I think my only other like kind of issue, not really super issue, but I I feel like the music from the original just fit the tone of the show better, with like the whole you know the old school, you know it just yeah, fit, like, like the, the, uh, the era better. That like flute music that played pretty much all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, they definitely <laughs> didn't have to lay it on as thick, but I, I don't know, like that that vibe just fit the show better to me. Yeah, well, I mean, I, mean, I and, hmm? that and freckles. You can't you can't forget freckles. <laughs> yeah, of course, freckles have to be in there. But I mean, I I know I sound like I'm being negative. The show is really good. It it, mm. it did a lot of things very well, and I am enjoying it. Um, but. It's kind of hard to shake off your your opinions of old shows. I, I'm trying not to let my bias overtake me in the way that uh, in the way that I did with Kai when they made those yeah. voice changes. Obviously, I don't have that much of an attachment to Kenshin as I do with Dragon Ball, but you know, you get used to it a certain way, and then when when a new version comes out, you know, it doesn't always rub you the right way. Well, it's like when. Uh... It's like when a uh, Kagome's voice changed in uh, the final act. Mm -hmm. It was like if if you uh, weren't paying attention and like you just went like you say came back to it like after a while you probably wouldn't notice. But if you're going from the final episode of the original series to like the first episode of final act, it is a shocking difference. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, aside from that, uh, I saw you that? said I... you watched uh, My Happy Marriage. I did. I, I did that like a week or two ago. It was pretty good. I, I think I watched it just specifically to listen to your your anime swap on it. It it hooks you after episode two. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like I, I mentioned on one of the discords. Like I wasn't expecting the supernatural aspect. Yeah, I wasn't I, either. <laughs> I wasn't <at> either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was definitely uh, that that caught me off guard. Um, I also caught up with Jujutsu Kaisen this week. I, I wrapped oh, nice. up season two today. Oh, so you so. got through all that depression? <laughs> yeah. No kidding. I mean, um, best girl. The best girl survives, but that's about it. Yeah. Well, yeah. It was a lot that happened this season. I, I don't know if it's just me, but I have, I have some trouble like keeping track of what's happening in that show. Is, is it just died. me? <laughs> well, I, I just mean like in general. Like ever since I started watching season one, going through, like I, I get the the basic, um, I guess like the Cliff Notes version of the events, but like. It's just while it's happening, I'm like, wait a minute, what is happening right now? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's kind of all over the place in terms of like what's going on. All I know is like 
legitimately those last like seven episodes was like fuck they're killing everyone yeah right no kidding supposedly uh, it's just a weird thing for me like i i usually don't have any issues keep like keeping up with a story like that even though i have i'm bad with names and it usually takes me a while to learn names but like i don't know something about this show i I just have trouble keeping track of what's going on did you you like or or dislike the uh, introduction for the second half of the season uh what the song yeah the you are my specials one i did i i thought it was catchy Okay, I just I have to bring this up because every time I do, I have to shout out Slade and say, ha, hi, Slade. <laughs> See, other people do like it. Um, I mean, it, was def- it was definitely it's- catchy. Um, I prefer the ending theme for the second half more. That's like the like really heavy, piano heavy one. No, I, I, I think I like the intro more than the outro, personally. Um, I mean, I liked it enough to just kind of let it play while I was doing shit. Like, you know, a lot of other shows, if, I, if I'm not feeling the music, I'll I'll stop what I'm doing to just hit the skip button, but I don't know. I didn't find myself doing it as much with that song. So yeah, that's a good sign. (laughs) Um, That's fair. Aside from that, I I managed to find a really good deal on a game that I never got around to playing as a kid. Um, So I started playing bully this week. Oh, bull. Oh, nice. Oh, Grand Theft Auto for kids. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Dude. I, I, I knew that this game was popular for a reason, but I was not expecting it to be this fucking entertaining. It's a good game. Back when Rockstar actually made more than just Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, it, it's just, I don't know. It, it's definitely a treat. I'm having a lot of fun with it when I have the chance to play it. I got to play that again. It's been forever. Yeah, it's my first time running through it. And just, it's definitely been, it's been a time for sure. Oh, yeah, I went to uh, the monk. I went to Newbury Comics today by, and bought some manga. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so they had a, they were doing their like one of their like buy one get one get one half off deals, and I mm-hmm. wish I knew that before I checked out because I would have uh, bought more. But I grabbed a couple books. I got two more of these. Nice. There you go. Uh, three and f- two and three. So they got third of the way done with these. <laughs> six more. Six more to go. <laughs> um, grab those. Also saw this, so I finally grabbed this. Nice. There you go. That's to anyone, to anyone not to anyone not watching, it's the time I was re- reincarnated as Yamcha. Oh yeah, I should probably <laughs> mention for the audio listeners. Um, <laughs> I got um, I got the t- two more Vizbigs for Dragon Ball Z, and then I got the the time I was incarnated as Yamcha. 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 <laughs> um, we're recording late, by the way. Um, no, but yeah. And then the final one. This one was great because this isn't even supposed to be out yet, but. Apparently Newbury doesn't care about release dates either. Um, I got uh, the next volume of Black Clover. Oh, cool! That's what I haven't gotten around to yet. Uh, Black Clover is good. It's kind of like Naruto, but if they were wizards. Hmm. I mean, um, Naruto—they pretty much are wizards in Naruto. It's all ninja yeah, but magic. They, <laughs> but this goes like even more like into it. Like they all have like their spell books and shit. No, oh, okay. Fair um, enough. Uh, it's good though. I, I highly recommend uh, Black Clover. Yeah, I've um, heard a lot of good things about it. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Yeah, it's, it's on my lot. list. <laughs> it's a lot of episodes. Yeah, and it's unfinished, unfortunately. But mm-hmm. yeah, I grabbed those. I wish I knew it was buy, buy, uh, buy one get, buy two get one half off. I would have bought probably more of the Bizbigs because they had all of them there. Yeah, I, I picked up a couple more Spy Families. Now I got up through Volume Nine now. Right. Oh, so you you got two more and you're caught up. Yeah. Well, so, that's exciting. Three, technically three more because well, I mean, there's another volume coming out this month. Actually, I thought eleven was the one that was coming out. Maybe it is. I'm <laughs> for all I know, I don't remember. Well, you could also um, be thinking of the um that like little get was it a guidebook or whatever. So there's eye, eyes only. Um, that's the uh. The little explanation to everything that's actually worth picking up it's an interesting read yeah i was i was definitely going to just for the sake of completion because spy family is definitely a series that i i like enough to want to collect all of that for there's also so. um family portrait which is the novelization oh interesting i haven't read it yet so i don't know how far it goes but it, it's it was a nice it was decent to pick up and just check out yeah, I might have to give that a try as well. I mean, I read enough books. It probably won't take me too long to read it. 
Oh yeah, volume. Okay, yeah, volume eleven is the one that's coming out. So you got one more to get caught up, and then eleven's uh, the next one that comes out this month. Yeah, so I'll probably just you know get each one individually, and then I'll be caught up. And I I have been um, checking them as I get them, and I think volume nine is the uh, the volume where it overtakes where the anime is covered up to. So yeah, right at the end, and then uh, volume uh, volume ten is all original. Yes, which is exciting. It's cool. I, I'm excited to get into some stuff that I haven't seen yet, for sure. See, when I, st- I, re- I started reading the manga before season two came out, so like I read the cruise ship arc before it came out, and I was like, oh, this is so cool, so much better animated. Mm-hmm. For they sure. did a really, they did a really good job on that. Then they gave us your getting shot in the ass. <laughs> so. Yes, which is just delightful. <laughs> <laughs> Feels so bad for her. But, uh, yeah, my. I, I know you wouldn't really have an answer for this because you haven't watched Attack on Titan yet, but um, my wife and I were having a little bit of a mini debate between each other about who would win in a fight to the death, Mikasa or Yor. Uh, probably Yor, because she's un- freakishly unhuman. I mean, to be fair, so is Mikasa. And, and you you wouldn't... I mean, her inhumanness makes sense in context of the series. You, you'll get True. it when you when you get there, but... See, the thing um, with Yor, though, is Yor's a massive unknown because we just don't understand what the fuck's wrong with Yor. Yeah, she's just superhuman just because. <laughs> because well, the like, situation demands it. Spoiler. I, uh, I mean, we, we, this this show is a spoiler warning as it is, but um, uh, my favorite is still like when she gets run over by the car while carrying Becky. <laughs> and then she's like, she's like, don't worry, Miss Becky. I'll get you to the hospital. And she's like, I think you need a hospital. <laughs> and she's yeah, like I- bleeding, just running. I actually just watched that episode like a week or two ago because um my my son had just finished catching up on the show because I told him he had to catch up on the show so he can go to the movies with us when it comes out. So he yeah. he he took that real seriously and like binged the whole rest of the show in like a week. That episode, that whole episode is great just because it's filler. Like one of my favorite lines in the show is uh, the "Don't com- don't commit adultery, Miss Blackwell." Yeah. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> That is too Keep funny. in mind, she's like five or yeah. however old they are. Yeah, I, I think all the other kids are a little bit older than Anya, but yeah, I mean they're all they're all pretty young. So yeah, um, oh, that's a good. That is a great show. Yeah, I'm that's, amazed that's, how much it's taken over since it came out. Yeah, that's that's a show that I I wasn't expecting to like as much as I ended up liking it. It's it, it definitely is right up my alley for sure. I still find it amazing that it was the um, the author, like, he was infamous for, like, all of his series that he would start would get canceled due to, like, lack of, uh, like, no one was buying them. Mm-hmm. So he did Spy Family as kind of like a writing exercise just to get through some, like, writer's block, and it ended up being the one that just blew up. Yeah. It's funny how that happens sometimes, though. You know, it's always, it's one of those things where it's like, um, you know, you throw a rock at a pole, and every time you're trying to hit it, you miss. And then as soon as you're not trying, you hit it dead on. Yeah. It's funny, though, because, like, because he, he was kind of, like, he didn't write it seriously. Now it's, like, the one that's stuck, and he kind of has to, like, keep sticking with it. Now it's his moneymaker, you know? <laughs> well, it's, like, at the same time, it's, like, everyone knows, like, he has to have the ending be satisfying. Because, like, if he doesn't, like, people are going to riot. Oh, yeah. It's it's too big at this point. Hmm. Wouldn't get away with it now. Yeah. That is true, but um, yeah, I think we should probably get into our topic now for this episode. Yeah, I think this is our longest cold open. <laughs> uh, other than, I guess, like the first episode, because we went on pretty long for that one, but... That's true. Yeah, so for this episode, we're decided to... Uh, we're going to do something a little different this time. Uh, really digging into that pop culture a- aspect of the show. We're going to be talking about our favorite movies and films. Yes. Um. I kind of had to just like last minute brainstorm. Like, I know we we knew what we were gonna do for at least a few days before before this, but um, I had to like, really sit down and brain try to brainstorm some movies because like I, I'm not one of the kind of people who really ranks movies. Like I, I can rank like you know animes or um, stuff like that, but uh, or video games and things like that. But I don't know why like movies just don't register the same way to me. See, I'm not a movie buff by any means. Like yeah, me neither. I have a lot most- of blind spots. Yeah, the most critical I look at movies are like anime movies. 
Which is really funny because you would you would joke when I had suggested this topic, you would joke saying, "Ah, oh, good, we'll get away from anime and get in games for once." And I'm like, "Yeah, but I feel like we're gonna have a lot of anime crossover on this, <laughs> regardless." Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I definitely tried to. Um, I I mean, the anime ones I'm sure will just come up as we go along, so I didn't bother taking any notes about those. But, um, yeah, I, I was mostly just kind of going for like some of my all time favorites. Yeah. It's weird too because I was trying to think like what is my favorite movie and I actually just don't have an answer because I'm not it's not like games or like anime or like music or stuff where I have like definitive answers like movies I kind of just I watch as I go. Yeah, I, I'm kind of the same way. I'm for the most part there are a couple I can name out that are just straight up my favorites. Um, yeah, but but in general, like I, I don't really tend to look at movies that way. Like sometimes a movie will just blow me away, and it, it'll be an incredible experience. But I don't know why it's just movies don't stick usually the same way. Like I have specific ones that stick with me, but like for the most part, I kind of like I'll have I have like a list of movies I like. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd really say I have movies that I'm like absolutely in love with. Yeah. That's fair. Um, so how would you want to start this? Um, I don't know. I was kind of thinking maybe we could try to hit on like a couple of genres in particular. Like, I don't know, like if you have a certain kind of movie that you generally tend to watch, like do you have like one or two specific genres that you tend to lean towards or are you open to like any kind of movie or uh, mostly any kind of movie? Um, like I enjoy my action films. I enjoy my uh, comedy. Not a huge horror guy. Um, mm -hmm. I do like drama, though, thrillers and stuff like that. You see, I, I like horror movies, but like, I don't generally tend to get scared by horror anything for the most part. Some of them will get me, but for the most part, um, I tend to see them more as action movies than horror movies. See, I prefer like psychological thrillers and stuff like that. Like, um, mm -hmm. like for an example, like I'm not a huge horror guy. Like I find a lot of horror to be really cheap. Like it's either like, it's just like CGI, like crap that like is just supposed to be for shock elements or it's jump scares and stuff, which yeah. I don't find jump scares scary. I just find them annoying. Mm -hmm. Um, to me, I enjoy like a psychological film because those ones really make you think like, for example, like one of my favorite movies of all time is like Donnie Darko, mm -hmm. which that whole movie is a psychological mindfuck. That one I haven't seen. My wife, Cindy, has tried to get me to watch it. I actually know we were going to watch it one time and her DVD was like scratched as fuck or whatever. And we couldn't watch it. So that's the only reason we didn't. And it just never came back up again. But that's that's one we definitely are going to end up watching at some point. That That's one of those movies that like you watch it once. And then you have to watch it again right after because you so you can find all the shit that you missed the first time around. Mm. Yeah. Like, uh, I love films like that. They're really like you have to watch multiple times to truly get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are those are fun. Um, but yeah, that's how I tend to like um, like Stephen King stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, I, I've read pretty much everything Stephen King has written, but um, it translates, I think, very well to film because it it's not like jump scare type of stuff. It is like, they're not always like psychological thrillers, but they're always more like suspense rather than jump scare. Mm. And that's definitely what I tend to like with, with some exceptions, like, you know, some things like the, the newer it movies and stuff will, will have a few jump scares in there, you know, but for the most part, it generally tends to stick to, um, you know, the buildup. Yeah. The slow like another, Another psychological movie that like I really stuck has stuck with me for years is like Requiem for a Dream. Mm -hmm. Like I think that was a uh, Darren Af uh first film. Okay. Um, that's just like one of those movies where it's like just kind of like psychological. Like it's kind of it's basically like one of those movies that feels so, like super real. Like it's basically like the world is fucked kind of. Yeah. Um, I, I don't really want to. I don't want to go too deep into that one just because that's really a movie you gotta watch to truly comprehend. Yeah, well, I think, um, I definitely think, I, I don't know if we want to go with a specific structure, but I would like to kind of tackle specific movies um, in their own episodes at some point or another. Oh, yeah. Um, 
I know we talked a little bit about doing like favorite childhood movies and stuff, but we could expand beyond that and just do movies we like that. Like you try to try to find ones in particular that one of us has seen and the other one hasn't and kind of go like that. That'd be kind of fun. Hmm. Um, but I mean, my, my all time, my, my favorite of favorites, the movie that I want, or rather the three movies that I watch at least once every year, obviously Lord of the Rings, <laughs> like that, those are just like, th- th- that was a huge, um, a huge step forward in, in film in general, you know, even putting aside the, the sheer scope of Lord of the Rings as a franchise, as, as the books, as, um, the expanded universe, if, if you want to call it that, um, like the, I mean, how many awards did the Lord of the Rings movies win? In, a lot. Like, it was like hundreds, hundreds of awards for everything from digital effects to acting to music to everything. Like I'd listen to the Lord of the Rings soundtrack all the time. I love it. Um, yeah, uh, I don't play too many Lord of the Rings games, but I think that's just be from an availability because I I'm always kind of like weird about some of like the random like the stuff that kind of builds off of Tolkien's world without actually being based in Tolkien's world, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, like how like PS in the PS2 era, we had like the Fellowship game, the Two Towers game, the Return of the King game. Um, but then we started getting all these games that were just like, oh, elsewhere in Middle Earth, this was happening. You know, like, yeah. those, those kinds of games I'm a little bit like, meh, like, I don't know if I want to get into that, but. Yeah, like um, we've said it in the past, I'm not a huge Lord of the Rings guy, but like mm-hmm. I did have the um, that Hobbit game on PS2 for some reason. Yeah, that's one that I, for some reason, I never played, even though I used to see it all the time. I should have. I don't know why I haven't. Hobbit's like my favorite book. It's supposedly a really good game. I still haven't got around to playing it. I got it for literally three dollars at a flea market. So can't argue with that. And that was because it was like legit, like a, a buy, a buy two get one free deal. And I legit looked through all the games, and it was the only one there that I was like, sure, that one, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th- th- those are the movies that, in particular, like I- I'll always go back to those ones. I'll always watch those ones. Like. So I have to ask because like I, I've got I've seen this like question before. The Hobbit's not a particularly long book. Like I actually it's actually on my bookshelf over there, believe it or not. <laughs> uh yeah. I think I got it. It was like a book report book at one point, and I my mom bought it and then I, I didn't read it because I never did book reports, but um That's fair. <laughs> it's not a super long book. Did it need to be three movies? God no. Okay, so Absolutely that you're on that not. side. Some people like try to justify it, and I'm always like, "Isn't it super short though?" <laughs> no, they they added so much to those movies. It it, it did not need. To, I mean, the fucking the, there was an animated film in the '70s, and that one like hour and a half film covered the whole book. And like, yeah, yeah it didn't spend a wicked lot of time on each thing. Like, yeah, they definitely could. I I feel like it would have done best as two movies, but of course because of the Lord of the Rings, the way that that those movies went, how popular they were, how successful they were. Obviously, they wanted to make another trilogy. Um, then they, they of, have to stretch everything out now. That was especially during that era, like they were stretching so many movies. Yeah, and, and a lot of people will blame Peter Jackson for the way that those those Hobbit movies turned out. It wasn't his fault. He actually came on the scene very late. Um, somebody else, I don't remember who, but somebody else actually set everything in motion with those movies. Um, everything from the scripts to uh, the set, you know, everything with that, um, with those movies. And he, for some reason, had to bow out. And if Peter Jackson hadn't stepped in, then the movies would have been scrapped. So he literally just came in to save the project, he didn't, but he didn't have time to change the scripts in ways that he wanted to, or any, like, you know, the, the way the Hobbit movies turned out weren't what he would have done if he had been given the time and the effort and the tools so yeah that's why whenever i hear people blame peter jackson for the way those movies turned out i'm like it's not his fault though <laughs> the, the movies wouldn't even exist if he hadn't stepped in but um yeah there's definitely this i i mean there were some things about the hobbit movies that i did like i did like that they took some of the stuff from like the expanded um like the more like background information that you only find out from like the appendices of lord of the rings and the silmarillion and stuff so it was kind of cool that they added some of that stuff, but then there was 
It's a really weird random shit that they added for no reason that had no business being there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I believe I swear it was all just to stretch these movies out because like. There was like a there was like this period of time where it was like every movie was being cut in two for no reason, mm -hmm. like um the, the Harry Potter like Deathly Hallows was was like two parts for no reason. Well, uh, that one kind of makes sense to me. Uh, I mean, I've I've read all the books. I, I grew up with them, and the seventh book is very dense. There's a lot going on, and they would have had to seriously abridge it if they wanted to make it one movie. So I, I that particular one, I understand why they cut it in two. Well, that See, was the one that started that. I believe like Harry Potter did it first and then like every other studio was like, shit, we got to split our movies in two because fucking they did it with Twilight. They did it with uh, the Hunger, Hunger Games. Games. Yeah, the Hunger uh, Games two. one was the one that I thought was kind of annoying. That, that was unnecessary. I, I've never seen those films, but I do know uh, my Alex um, and our, our mother, uh, they went to go see. Um, they went to go see those films. And I remember my mom's reaction when she came out. She was like, it just kind of ended like and it was like very abrupt. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of how the books are, too, though. I wasn't happy with the way those books ended. And honestly, yeah. like I, I loved those books when I first read them in high school, the Hunger Games books. And uh, I came back to them. Actually, when we were working at Richards, I, I went back to them just to see, you know, kind of just like a revisit, like see how I like them. And I hated them after, like when I read see, them again. My My favorite was like everyone was like, they're so original. I'm like, it's just Battle Royale. Yeah. It's just Battle Royale. <laughs> I mean, the whole concept of throwing a bunch of kids in a death, ma death match together isn't new. No, <laughs> Battle Royale did it first, and now Squid Games has done it again. I mean, fucking name any fucking shonen anime. <laughs> I know. It's done it. It's done it. It's, uh, yeah. Tuning exams, hunter exams, like, you know, it's, it's yeah. happened plenty of times. I just sort of, I, I love when people are like it's so original. It's like no, it's not. Like, nothing's I mean, it was original. A, it was a fun idea, and I liked I I liked the concept of it. I think the problem for me though is I just don't like the main character, and that can ruin a series for you. See, I hate things that are super popular, as I've learned recently, and they, those were so popular I just had no interest. That's fair. It, it's kind of like when it, it it's part of the reason why I didn't get into Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. was like it was just too popular and like people uh, it was the obsession that really kind of turned me away like some people took those books like they they made them like legitimately their personality in life at, for a while there yeah and uh i was always a little weirded out by that but then again i was also the weird kid in the corner watching anime so yeah well i mean everyone has like everyone tends to find one thing that they tend to gravitate to and take a little bit too seriously mm -hmm. um I mean, I, I did the same thing with Dragon Ball when I was a kid. And, True. You know, we, I just remember all, Harry Potter was like a bases. big one at the time. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know how I would have gone with Harry Potter if I didn't spend so much time at my cousin's house. Because a lot of yeah. the movies and stuff that I watched as a kid, I, I watched just because I happened to be over there. And that's how I watched the first two Harry Potter movies for the first time. And, you know, because they were just on, I watched it naturally. And... I ended up really liking them. Um, and I think by that point, I was starting to get into reading, um, which actually The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings was like a big thing why I ended up getting into reading in the first place because um, uh, my, my uncle had gotten me these like uh, books on tape, you know, back when audiobooks came on cassettes. Anybody remember yeah. that? <laughs> yeah <laughs> good times. and uh whenever i was grounded i would just listen to those tapes over and over again and i just fucking loved the stories so much that um you know i, I ended up going out and getting the book for the hobbit and i read that god dozens of times and then i just went from there you know i got into the harry potter movies so i started reading the harry potter books and it just went on from you know way. a um a film based off of a book that um i really wish did better but didn't quite do as probably as well as they hoped What's do you remember the uh the live action uh series of a fortunate events movie yes that's actually i i had i intended to bring that one up because i watched that one a lot as a kid that movie honestly i think is held up way better than people probably remember like oh, that's yeah. one of, that's one of those jim carrey movies where he just fucking steals the show the entire time he really did and, and while i'll say like like, to the point where I had no idea how anyone was going to follow that up when Netflix announced that series. 
And I will say I was pleasantly surprised with how that series turned out. Both Neil Patrick back- Harris was a decent um, uh, Count Olaf, but like I just couldn't think of anyone but Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey just brings it, you know, he, he like full force, like he brings the weirdness of, of the character. He brings like the the darkness of the character. Just Jim Carrey has a lot more acting chops that a lot of people tend to give him credit for. Well, it's like it's like the Sonic movie. Like people were like even when before, like they fixed it and made it actually good. Like when it looked like an absolute dumpster fire, uh, there was people that were going to watch it just because Jim Carrey was there. Yeah, and they pulled some big names for that movie. Fucking Meryl Streep was in that movie. Mm. <laughs> like the only thing that bothered me about that movie, uh, going back to it, was uh, they kind of changed the order of the books a little bit. Yeah, they they mixed some stuff up, and that well, they, I think that was part of the reason why we never got any more. Yeah, because they cut the ending of the first book, and then they put it at the end of the film because the uh, the whole mm-hmm. like. Uh, the whole like play thing and fake marriage that happens at the end of the first book. Yeah. But they put it at the end of the third of the, of the movie because they did the first three books in the film, like see in like this kind of uh, sequential order. The mm-hmm. problem is though, they kind of that, that it honestly was a really good ending like for the film overall. So they kind of stuck it at the end, yeah. even though everything had already happened. Yeah. But I did. I liked how, they handled his character in that movie where um, at the point where the wedding should have happened when he like parks them on the the railroad tracks and he's just like, Oh, it sure would be a shame if they died and left me all their money. Like, and then uh, what's his face shows up. And he's like, no, you wouldn't have gotten the money. He's like, wait, I wouldn't have gotten it. <laughs> like, it's just like, they got of really played up like kind of his stupidity. And yeah. he just, he just played it so well. It was, it was great. I loved it. I still think my favorite sequence in that film, because they really mastered those sets, mm-hmm. was how they handled the uh, uh, the wide window and that whole house. Like, yeah, that was fucking ter- gave me anxiety just looking at it. Oh yeah, I mean even even reading the books when I was a kid, like that shit gave me anxiety. And the fucking leeches. Uh, yeah, the leeches were pretty bad. Uh, the is, yeah, man. with their fucking massive teeth in the movie. Yeah, I was like, Holy yeah, fuck. fucking like twelve thousand teeth per leech. Like what the shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember the in the um the movie like you see the house was creepy in the book but like you didn't really get an idea of just how creepy it was you, you see it in the movie it's legit on like these little tiny wooden pegs and it's like like how just like yeah. how does that work doesn't make any sense and, and that's the one scene of the where things... it inevitably collapses is fucking horrifying oh for sure and um I love I love how freaking like uh what's your face um the I, I forget the character Meryl Street was doing the whole thing about like oh I never used doorknobs I'm afraid that one of them will burst into a million pieces one of those pieces will hit my eye <laughs> and then like later on in the movie like something happens like a blowtorch or something hits one of the doorknobs and it fucking explodes yeah <laughs> well, like I, also the whole me. the whole scene like you straight up see her die <laughs> like oh yeah like he just like lets her go in the boat and we don't see it but like you get the implication it's like what the fuck like really? i love the way that happens too like it, it kind of like seems like he's gonna let her live because she's like no no take the kids it's fine I, you know i won't say shit and then he, it kind of seems like he's gonna let her go and then she corrects his grammar and he's like you know what bitch you're you're gone i'm done with you <laughs> yeah i was like jesus like what a what an asshole for real i don't know that that's just one of those movies that i i, I loved that movie i had a great time with it also, Lemony Snicket, like, being, like, in the background the entire time. Like, the scene with the uh, the lizard in the reptile room, like, the, the jump scare where he's like, oh, sorry, my typewriter jammed. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. The, the way that they handled, like, the the humor and, like, the little, like, um, like tension breaks and stuff for that movie was just, I don't know. That that movie doesn't get nearly enough love, in my opinion. That, that I don't was... get why people didn't like it. It's a really faithful adaption, honestly, for the most part. Yeah. I, I think... Maybe it's because the diehards really wanted to see like the later. I mean, I was part of it, kind of in that camp too, where a lot of the diehards wanted to see the stuff that happens later on. But yeah, you know, the way that they set it up, there was no way it was ever going to happen. I found all of my books for that series, by the way. Like when I was going through storage, I have a bunch of them still. I got to like see if I'm missing any of them because they're kind of cool. I think I'm missing like two of them. Like uh, I think I'm missing like 11 and 12 or something or 10. Yeah. Or I'm not sure which, but. I have most of them. 
I haven't read um, it in a long time, though. I do remember that um, Tim Curry narrated the books on the audiobooks. Tim Curry Which makes some perfect. really bizarre appearances in some films. Yeah, for sure. I still can't get over like some of his voice work, like roles. Like uh, he's Nigel Thornberry, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like that's like the voice I think of when I think Tim Curry. Yeah, um, I remember seeing like a, like a, a meme or something and being like, you could tell a whole lot about a person by what they remember Tim Curry from before anything else. Yeah, um, you know he was for, almost the Joker. I mean, that would make sense. He he was almost the Joker in the animated series, but it was uh, his portrayal was considered like too terrifying. So they brought in Mark Hamill instead, who gave the iconic uh, performance. But I've always been curious of what Tim Curry sounded like. I mean, have you seen the It miniseries? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> It'd probably be something along, along, along those lines. You know, it's just one psycho clown to another. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. But, um, yeah, yeah, that was a great adaption. Um I was trying to think. I had another one that just popped in my head, but I just lost it. Um, another one that I think had a lot of potential, and I'm really upset that it didn't do as well as I wanted it to or continue into the later books was the Inkheart movie. I don't know if you ever saw that one. Mm. Um, I didn't see it, but I remember it. Yeah, I, I read those books when I was a kid, and I, I loved those books. Um, and it's one the ones that I never really hear anybody talk about, but they made a movie out of the first one with Brendan Fraser as the lead. Brandon Frazier, I swear, is in like every movie that failed. Yeah, which is upsetting because I like Brendan Frazier. But yeah, um, he's a, he's a really good actor. He just had some really bad films, which yeah. sucks. They wasn't even his fault. But uh, yeah, that that movie had a lot of potential. There's a lot of really cool stuff about it. Uh, I, I don't think the movie did horrible, like as far as um, you know, adapting the event events of the books and stuff. Uh, I just wish it had continued. Because the second and third books, in my personal opinion, I like way more than the first book. Because hmm. the the whole concept of those books is uh, uh, basically the the guy Brendan Fraser plays has this ability where if he reads a book out loud, he can pull things out of the book. Hmm. And um, but it's like a it's like an equivalent exchange type of thing where. If he pulls something out, something also goes in. So uh, he was reading out loud to his family one day, and uh, his wife and their two cats went in, and uh, two villains and I guess an antihero came out, hmm. and that kind of like set up the whole events of the first book, and then the second and third book take place in the book that the villains came from because they read themselves into the book. Ah. Uh. So it's like a much more fantasy type setting, but they're from the real, it's kind of an isekai. In okay. A way. Um, but I, I don't know. I just like the way the books handle it. Like, and I, I would have loved to see uh, Brendan Fraser as like a highwayman. Cause that's kind yeah. of what his character turns into later on. That's a series. That's a book series. I haven't thought of in forever, but um, I remember those, they were all over the place back in uh, middle school, high school. Yeah, I, I, I love those books growing up. They're, so they're I, definitely ones that don't get enough attention, in my opinion. So I remember the adaption I was thinking of. Uh, do you remember The City of Ember? No, I don't. No, you never. So so The City of Ember was a it was like a book series that uh, it was kind of like this post-apocalyptic world where mm-hmm. uh, it was basically like the world was about to like basically I think it was like a nu- nuclear thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so they sent like an entire like basically like generation of people underground to this like city that was built like under underneath everything called the city of ember and it was like this like cave city like they, they were basically supposed to be down there until like the nuclear fallout was over mm-hmm. and then there was like a secret code on how to get back up that would uh that would uh open and so th- that the residents would know how to get back up to the surface but um it, it was kind of cool because like the way they did it was like they only people they sent down were el- the elders and like like babies mm-hmm. so that the elders would all die off and no one would know how to get back to the surface okay so it's kind of like the vaults and yeah the uh what's what's interesting though is like the uh 
the code on how to get back up got lost. So they ended up staying down there way longer than they were supposed to. Mm-hmm. So like the city, by the time the, uh, the film takes place, well, the, the book took place um, in the film itself, the film version, it was like, the city's like decrepit and falling apart because they they weren't supposed to be down there this long. Yeah. And it's kind of like this big mystery of there where they discover the, uh, they find the code box and they actually piece it together. And the main characters eventually work their way back to the surface. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it's sad because the film bombed because it came out on the same week as like some other big name films so and no one went to see it. Mm-hmm. Even though it had like Bill Murray and stuff in it, like really good actors. Huh. And it sucks because like the second book, uh, the people of sparks is like about them on the surface. And it's like such a better book. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Like there was that one, there was the prophet of Yonwood. That was the third book. That was actually the prequel that told the story of what happened before. Okay. And then the final one was like the, the diamond of dark eye, which is actually, they go back down to Ember. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's a, it's a cool series. They, they're only four books, but like only the first one got adapted into a, uh, adapted into a film. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's always a bummer when that happens. I mean, like, you know, you got like Inkheart, the there's that that one that you just mentioned, the City of Ember. Um, I think I, I never read the books, but I, I think Aragon had a similar thing where the one book came out or the one movie came out and it just didn't do well. They never continued it. One like, that did do well though was um we had mentioned it in um kind of the the the, the scrapped pilot for this podcast in a lot of ways. Um the Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah, that's right. Those, those had like movies. multiple films. Yeah, there was three, I think. At least the Disney ones. I know that there was um I know BBC made their own versions back in the eighties or nineties. See, um, I I can't so I remember watching the original BBC version of like uh Lion Witch in the Wardrobe. Yeah, on uh, and- on Blockbuster VHS tapes. Yep, and I can yep. never get over that one because the way they animated the stone table breaking is the funniest fucking thing ever. It's been so long since I've seen it. Yeah. I, I don't remember Wicked Lot. I just remember watching it and like seeing like the um the animatronics and stuff for yeah. the animals. So I always remember it because like in the in the Disney version, like it's really the stone table is like this epic, like legit what you think when you think stone table, and when it breaks, it like it's like this big like boom kind of thing, and it's really epic. Mm-hmm. In the BBC film, the table literally just goes, it just falls <laughs> apart. It's the dumbest fucking shit ever, but it's, oh, I love, I, I love stupid shit like that. And like, those were, oh God. I was just gonna say, those were really good films. Like Disney did a surprisingly good job adapting those. Yeah. I, I still haven't seen the, the sequels to Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. I don't know why I haven't. It's just, I, I want to, I intend to, especially since I really liked Voyage of the Dawn Treader mm-hmm. um, when I read it. But I don't know why I just never got around to it. Um, I actually have the really awesome. Uh, it's like the all-in-one book back there somewhere that has like all the stories. Oh yeah, the the big beefy paperback book. Yeah, the one with the the line right on the front. Yeah, I got the same one. That was how I read through all the books the first time. Because hmm. as a kid, I read. I only read the the first two. I read um the Magician's Nephew and the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Yeah, I, I wish the Magician's Nephew would get an adaptation. Although, yeah. I, Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, yeah, that that one is honest. The whole series is really good. Yeah. Um, I was hearing a while ago that Netflix got the rights to make Narnia a Narnia series. I don't know whatever happened to that. I never heard any follow ups. It's, it's been like because I was hearing that back when I was reading the books, and that was a while ago. I think Netflix buys a lot of rights, and then like they kind of pick and choose what they want to do. Because mm-hmm. I swear, like they'll buy like a bunch of rights, and then they'll make one thing, and it'll bomb, and then they'll just get rid of all the other rights because they're like, nah, never mind. Mm-hmm. I don't know because it would have been nice, especially with the treatment that the uh, unfortunate events series got. Like, if we could get like that amount of effort and love put into a Narnia series, it could be really, really good. Mm. So it would be nice, but I don't know. I guess we'll see. <laughs> so. Another genre of film that I really enjoy, it's it's kind of niche, but I really like these are like disaster films. Well, like, um, uh, like Day After Tomorrow type stuff? Uh, to a degree. Like, when I think of like disaster films, like the one that, like, this is one of my favorite films of all time is uh, The Poseidon Adventure. Oh, I, I don't think I've seen that one. So that's the story about it's the, um, 
last year voyage of like a ocean liner cruise ship mm-hmm. uh, and they get, they get hit by a rogue wave and the ship like capsizes upside down oh, okay. and it's like a, it, it goes from being a disaster film then it becomes a survival film where like a bunch of uh like a group of passengers basically has to uh work their way in the upside down ship to like the uh the bottom of the ship which is now the top okay so it's that one pokemon episode that that basically that <laughs> that, that episode is a re- Anytime you see like a ship capsized and they make like a thing like that, it's usually a reference to the Poseidon Adventure. Fair enough. Yeah, it's just a cool film though, because it's like really like they go. It's basically kind of like one of those sequence of event things where like the group will like go and they'll have like they start out with like this big group and progressively they go through all the different like turmoils that they'll run into. Like, say mm-hmm. there's an entire section of the ship that's flooded now and they need someone to swim through here, and of course somebody's not going to be able to swim through. Mm-hmm. So it's like they progressively get less and less till they finally get to the end where they bust out of the uh, the bottom of the uh, bottom of the ship, which is now the top. Yeah. And uh, escape. It, it's just a cool. It's a really well done old old style film, like especially the original version. Mm-hmm. They've remade it like four times. And the most modern one is the one that's just called Poseidon, which is like the, the Wolfgang Peterson film. It's, he's the same guy that did uh, like the perfect storm and like Das Boot. Yeah, there was. Um... Re- there was, I, I'm sure there were sharks involved. If it was a capsized ship, um, uh, so they were never out in the open sea, so we really never had any sharks. Okay, so it's not the all right because because this is one movie that involved, uh, that involved sharks in some way that I always forget the name of, but it always tends to come up. And I was wondering if it was that movie, but no, it's not. <laughs> Yeah, not in a Poseidon adventure, just because they never actually go out in the open ocean. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't really do a whole lot of like, um, like ocean based movies. I realize. Uh, yeah. Like that's that's one of the few that I have because like I'm not a huge fan of like Titanic. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I saw of... it years ago, but it's it's not one of my favorite movies by any means. <laughs> See that film is hilarious to me because I saw it as a uh, the first time I saw Titanic was see that film came out in ninety seven. Mm-hmm. I saw it two thousand five, so I was ten, and I remember it because uh, I think every like young child that saw the movie remembers it for the boob scene. Yeah, I mean, I I saw it very young the first time. Like, because I remember the house that I was living in at the time, and I was I was really young when I lived there. I must have been like five when I saw it for the first time, or maybe even younger. I think we rented it at Blockbuster, and my parents didn't know. I really don't remember because I watched it on my own in the they second. Didn't know by two thousand five. <laughs> I don't know if they ever watched it. To be honest, because I was big into ships, it's the only reason I wanted to see Titanic. That's fair. And um. I remember it being really boring because it was it was mostly just love story shit that I didn't care about. I wanted to see the ship. Yeah. Um, but I remember the 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 painting scene because I that was like one of like let's see, ten year old me. That was probably the first time I saw boobs. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was I think that was a lot of kids in our generation's first experience with boobs. Yeah, it was just it was such a shocking scene. Cause I remember it was like you were I was watching by myself and I like looked at the door, I'm like, parents aren't gonna show up, right? <laughs> childhood brain at the time oh, it's just geez. funny it's funny shit like that yeah that's that's funny um so are there any like um so i know you said you're not crazy about like horror movies you generally tend to more like suspense are there any in particular that you do remember liking a lot um like whether it was like whether it was just like a straight up horror movie or just had horror elements or so I like, like a more hmm? I, I like the paranormal activity movies just because they were unique. Mm-hmm. At least when they first started. <laughs> yeah, I, I only watched the first three. I stopped after the third one. That's um because I, I lost I, interest by that point. But um I think Cindy and I binged through all of them a couple years ago. Well, the formula is only so unique, like the first couple times, and then you're like, yeah, this is the same shit every time. Yeah. Well, eventually, the way that they, when they kept making the movies, it ended up becoming like a, like they had like a story going on in the background that ties back to the first couple movies. 
Yeah. So, I mean, if, watching them all back to back like that over like a week, it, it it makes those later movies a little bit more likable. <laughs> yeah. Because of the way they uh, tie together. I like that idea, like the whole like kind of like found footage style of like a uh, film making. Mm-hmm. J- that feels more real to me than like the super dramatic shit that like feels fake as shit. Yeah, for sure. Then like there's just something like I, there's a scene in the third film that like I remember what I always thought was really good at like it, it, it it's a jump scare that's effective in my opinion where it's like the um the camera's like kind of swiveling back and forth and like it just keeps going back and then at one point it cuts them just a light bulb that just explodes and it's like what yeah like the shit like that or like the scene where like all like the uh, the stuff in the kitchen vanishes and mm-hmm. then it just reappears everywhere and then yeah when when it's they... all like hanging from the ceiling and then it yeah. just drops yeah yeah that that was just wild. stuff like that like that is like good like jump scare where like it actually is like effective mm-hmm not For just sure. like like the worst jump scares are the ones where you're expecting them and you're just like, all right, when's it gonna come? And then it's like, uh, okay, that was dumb. Thank mm. you. Um, yeah, so I, I only at least out of the ones that I took particular note of, I only put like a couple of like you know, horror movies, so to speak. Uh, but one of the ones I put on, I don't know if you've seen it, but uh Doctor Sleep. No, I've never seen that. No, it it's the sequel to The Shining. Uh, yeah, I probably haven't seen it. It's honestly, I know you think like, oh, it's a sequel to a classic 80s horror film. It's pretty much like, I mean, most people consider The Shining to be the definitive horror movie. Um, the, the Shining. So I know there's like two camps. There's the ones that really enjoy the original uh, version of The Shining. And then there's the people who prefer Stephen King's rever- revision of it. Mm-hmm. Which um, is really the more book accurate version. See, I'm kind of a, I'm 50 50 on it. I prefer the, I prefer the overall experience of the accurate one, but the original one is just such a great film. Yeah. And honestly, the, the, the 90s one, it, it's just too long. It's like they needed to shorten that up. Like it's then, one thing with, with something like The Stand that makes sense to be six hours long because there's so many yeah. different characters that you're following and they're going all the way across America and there's all sorts of traveling and different like character interactions. The Shining is just three people. It's yeah. three people through the whole thing. So like, it's a I get, bit different. I get why people probably prefer the more accurate one, but like Jack Nicholson just fucking steals that role like so well. Yeah. Although I do, I do like Stephen Weber as an actor a lot. Um, he actually narrates the It audiobook. It's a oh, fucking, does he? fucking phenomenal job with that. Um, but uh, going back to Doctor Sleep, I, I know a lot of people will say like generally like a, a sequel to a 30 year old classic is generally never going to work. This is one of those few exceptions where this is honestly a, a true piece of art. It does everything right that you would want. Uh, and yes, it is based off of the sequel, the sequel book that Stephen King wrote, but the, the writer director of this movie, Mike Flanagan, mm-hmm. who's a fucking genius when it comes to horror movies and horror series and stuff. Um, he he did such a good job of making it an adaptation of the book, the Doctor Sleep book, but also making it a sequel to the Shining movie. And yeah. he found a way to make that work. And the the acting is fantastic. The effects are fantastic. Um, and the horror of that that movie isn't like it, it's not just jump scares. It, it there is like significant suspense. There is. There is one part that is particularly hard to watch if you're a parent because uh, the whole movie revolves around essentially psychic vampires that kidnap kids with The Shining. Uh, so, and yeah, a part of their whole thing is that they like feed on The Shining itself to stay young and powerful. Um, and the way that they refine the The Shining power to make it more effective is by torture. So there's a very hard to watch scene in there. Um, but overall, it just it does such a good job of depicting um, Danny Torrance as an adult, uh, him going through his own struggles with alcoholism, uh, going through the same motions that his father went through, 
uh, facing those demons and overcoming them in a way his father couldn't. Like, there's so many different aspects to this movie that he takes to a whole nother level that even the book didn't go to. And it's just so well done. I'll always remember the Simpsons adaption of it, too. Oh, yeah, the shinning. Yeah. <laughs> no TV and no beer make Homer something, something. <laughs> I think um, I think one of my favorites was the, the South Park version of it. South where, Park did it. Um, what was it? Was a Randy Randy bought like the last blockbuster? It, yeah, like, the blockbuster was like the Overlook, and he's just like frozen outside in like the Jack Nicholson pose. Yeah, <laughs> just, like, we're going to McDonald's. Do anything? Just chicken nuggets, and fudge fries. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty great. So speaking of uh, comedy, like comedy films are a uh, interesting one to me because like it's either the legitimately a, a funny thing or it's like dumb humor, which is just kind of bad. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I, I find things to like about both personally. Yeah. So when I think of like classic comedy films, like one of my favorites of all time is the blues brothers. See, that's another one of my blind spots. It's one I've been hearing about yeah. for decades, but never uh, got around to watching the blues brothers is it's just such a fun story about like a whole, like, getting the band back together kind of thing because they need to make they need to make money to save this orphanage and you go there's like so many great songs throughout the film like it's great if you're a music buff mm. and just like some of like the humor is like hilarious like uh at one point like one of the blues brothers uh he has like an ex-wife who's like just following them the entire time played by yeah. carrie like, played by carrie fisher and like oh, she blows sick. up she blows up an entire train station just because they were living there and then they just like climb out of the rubble and they're like the hell happened <laughs> that's silly as shit yeah like I, was, Dan I, I didn't even know that was a comedy movie i mean it's it's mostly a music film like i like action adventure kind of film but there's like so much comedic like value to it yeah that's like right. um like there's literally like like it's one of the fame most famous like uh police chase films of all time where like um <laughs> by the end of the film all of these different people that they've like run it <laughs> they've run a run a, a muck of mm-hmm. throughout the film like are chasing after him because they've like they bum off like a bunch of different places like get chased by all these different uh groups and like the ending like car chase like police chase is hilarious because there's just like so many police officers following them from like each and every like direction mm-hmm. like just so much insane shit um, yeah th- there's at one point where they're like going they drive through a mall and they're just like commenting on all the stores like that they're driving through yeah that's funny and the music's just amazing like that is one of my favorite like old films i like to put on every now and then like uh dan Aykroyd, john john belushi just great great all around Mm -hmm. um yeah i'm trying to think of some of my favorite comedy movies i mean there's the classics you know like uh monty python and the holy grail uh (laughs) that 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 film is so quotable in a lot of ways like Mm -hmm. The, the 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 black knight fight is still great the uh they kill the narrator at the beginning and then they get arrested at the end for killing the narrator yeah the um, fucking um the coconuts i mean that's the opening of the movie and the coconuts it's just like such a it's just such a like recognizable part of that movie young old lady man <laughs> it's like <Yeah>, man <laughs> sorry um <laughs> Like, bring out your dad. It's like, I'm not quite dead yet. He's like, oh no, he's about to die. Don't worry. It's like, it's like, can you please take him? It's like, I really should. And he's like, could you please do something? He's like, uh, he's like, look, look the other way. And he's just like, and like breaks his neck. And he's like, there you go. And he's like, all right. It's like, really help him be repressed. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> help, help him be repressed. Um, the whole oh, Camel- yeah. the Camelot thing with like the uh, the Knights of the Round Table, and it's like, no, nah, it's like the let's not go to Camelot. It is a silly place. It's a silly place. Stop that groveling. I can't stand it when people grovel. I need so to the- show that movie to Xander. I've been wanting to watch that with him for so long. It's overdue. The first castle burned to the ground, fell into the swamp. The second castle fell on fire, exploded, and fell into the swamp. The third <laughs> castle, well, that one stayed. And that's why yeah. we call this Swap Castle or some shit. Yeah, that's too funny. Or the scene with the guard out front and Sir Lancelot is just like running towards the screen, but he keeps like, re- it keeps replaying the scene over and over. <laughs> yeah. And then it just cuts to him. He just kills him. And it's He's like, just what? there. Uh, <laughs> She's got a huge. 
tracks of land. Of land. <laughs> uh, the tale of Sir Robin, you know, bravely bold Sir Robin. He forged for Camelot. He was not afraid to die. Oh, brave Sir Robin. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. I, I get that's one of those movies that I, I just have to watch every now and then. It's, it's been too long for sure. Like, um, like, what is your favorite color? Blue. Oh, go on across. <laughs> the next one. It's like, what is the capital of Assyria? <laughs> I don't know that. Fucking no. <laughs> and then the fa- my favorite one is like, what is your favorite color? Blue. No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you fuck up that one? <laughs> and then it's like, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? An African or European swallow? Well, I don't know that. <laughs> and then he gets launched into the ravine. <laughs> Oh my god, it's just that comedy was just in a different place back then. They just really nailed it. Especially nailed Brit- it. British comedy, because it was mm-hmm. so different. Like, um, So bizarre. I, another one of the Monty Python films was like The Life of Brian. And, like, mm-hmm. uh, Life of Brian has like one of my favorite like what the fuck scenes in it, because there's like literally a scene where like Brian like falls and gets like picked up by aliens and then there's just like this whole scene with aliens and then they drop him off exactly where he was and then they crash and it's like completely in the middle of the film and then they never <laughs> acknowledge it again and it's like what god uh one of the other uh i think one of the only other monty python movies i watched was the meaning of life meaning of life's the other one that one was hilarious i i, I think i rented it from the library actually <laughs> or well, i mean that's the library that's all based off of the Flying Circus show itself, which in its in its own right was like hilarious. Yeah, I I need to watch more Monty Python because that's that's I don't know something about that particular style of comedy that just tickles me in a way that nothing else does. My favorite is like the uh, there's one skit where it's like the um, they're doing like the the uh, the track and field stuff, and it's like it's the uh, the uh it's the uh the, the marathon for people with no sense of direction and then the gun goes off and they all run in different directions <laughs> uh there's the uh the marathon for the deaf and the, the gun fires off and none of them run mm-hmm. and then the, my favorite one is the marathon for those with uh very small bladders and the gun goes off and they all immediately run into the bathroom <laughs> and then they cut to it later and it's like showing them running down the the, the trail and then they keep running into the woods every five seconds to pee mm-hmm. before coming back out that's too funny. Just like stupid shit like that. That's just funny. Yeah. Um, Another great uh, comedy film is uh, Spaceballs. Yeah. I, I actually, in my notes, I, I just wrote Mel Brooks. <laughs> that, that's another. Spaceballs is another one of those movies that's like obscenely quotable. Like, yeah. Like Spaceballs, uh, Men in Tights, the Robin Men Hood movie. Tights. I love that movie. I love um, the scene where it's like, uh, it's like, who are you? barf it's like not in here this is a mercedes he's like no that's my name i'm a mog half man half dog i'm my own best friend <laughs> fucking john candy john candy was a legend rest in peace like any i'm thinking of like all the movies oh he was in the blues brothers another great film that he was in oh shit uh cool runnings cool runnings was great mm. um oh fucking um uncle buck uncle buck that was that was one of the classic ones from when I was a kid. I love that movie. The Great Outdoors. That was another great one. Mm-hmm. Um, Stripes. If you like uh, military comedies, he was in that one too. I haven't seen many military comedies. Um, Stripes is really good. That's that's another uh, another pretty funny one. Um, it's not technically a comedy, but Full Metal Jacket's a really good one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. So, obviously, being in the generation that, that we grew up in, uh, there are three actors in particular, one of them we've already mentioned, uh, that were very big during the 90s and early 2000s. And just about everybody from our generation has seen at least a few movies from each of these people. Uh, them being Adam Sandler, Jim Carrey, and Michael Myers. Hmm. Are there any in particular that stand out to you? Any that you liked in particular? Or do, do these actors just drag you nuts? Well, Adam Sandler is an interesting one to me because, oh, his movies are... Uh, hit or miss. Hit or, well, his <laughs> early films are all hits. Like um, Happy Gilmore, like Billy Madison, yeah. those mm-hmm. Big Daddy. Little those Nicky. Are, Little Nicky. Yep. Uh, even Mr. Deeds was pretty good. Um, I liked Mr. Deeds. 
the it water was a little boy. bit like yeah oh the water boy yep that's a classic like all his like old ones were really good it, it was like right around when uh like eight crazy nights came out that's where he really started going downhill you know it's funny you mentioned that because i i don't know if i mentioned it on the podcast but i finally finished watching the alabasta arc of one piece and oh, yeah. there's there's a villain in that arc who his gimmick is he's like one of those like extremely unproportionally huge muscly tough guys uh but his his stupid joke gimmick is that he has a ridiculously high squeaky voice oh so you and he literally just you. sounds like whitey from Eight crazy nights that <laughs> that movie annoys the hell out of me because the animation is beautiful like i believe um a lot of the animators who actually animated that film came from like the iron giant like uh studio you know now that you say that i definitely see it it they look very similar mm. Uh, but the the plot is so fucking dumb in that movie. It is, but it's I don't know. It's just one of those classics. Like it's like a classic Christmas movie. I love the songs because they're all hilariously bad. But um, mm-hmm. it, it it's actually not even a Christmas movie. It's a Hanukkah movie, technically. True, but I mean, I I see it as a Christmas movie. Yeah, me and Alex watched that. I don't know movie. if that makes me uncultured or not, but <laughs> yeah. Me and Alex watched that for New Year's this year because she found like a TikTok that had the the bum bitty bitty song in it. Mm -hmm. And she's like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, oh, you've never seen Eight Crazy Nights. I'm like, you got to see Eight Crazy Nights. So we watched and she's like, what the fuck was that? And I'm like, definitely worth a watch. (laughs) Like it was Eight Crazy Nights. So what'd you think? She's like, that was the worst thing I've ever seen. (laughs) The fucking porn body scene. Oh God, she's still, (laughs) she has like nightmares about that scene. Like that horrified her. For real, <laughs> fucking dear. <laughs> I love oh that movie God. though because of the scene in the mall with all the uh, the stores like singing uh, toward singing at him, and I'm like, half these don't exist anymore. Yeah, right. <laughs> no kidding. Like, yeah, there's so many. That's that's such a dated movie at this point. I mean, a lot of movies from that particular point in history are pretty dated because a lot of that stuff doesn't exist anymore. True. Uh, we were saying Adam Sandler though, like his later films though. Oh my God. It's like, it's like a grab bag of whether it's going to be good or not. No kidding. I, I, like, I never even bothered with Jack and Jill because I just had oh, no interest in watching that. Yeah. That, that was bad. Um, click, click is hit or miss for me. Like some people really like click. I, I thought it was okay. The first time I can't stand it now. Yeah. It's one of those movies where you can't overwatch it. Um, See, all, all I ever think with Click is the scene where he's in the car turning himself different colors and then the, the jogger runs by and he slows her down because haha boobs. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> that's one of those Adam Sandler things. Yeah. Um, um, but, I mean, there was definitely parts of that movie. The fucking Terry Crews scene was great. Yeah. <laughs> he's fucking just, singing, singing the song in the fucking in the car and he mutes him. Apparently, uh, he was Pixels was an Adam Sandler movie too, wasn't it? uh i think so i never saw that one i just heard it was bad so i never bothered oh that's a bummer granted most adam sandler films now are generally bad i i'm one of the i'm one of the people who actually thought funny people was a decent movie i don't know if i saw that one that was the one where like adam sandler is like i think he was a comic in that movie but he was like at a point in his life where he was just kind of like fuck this fuck that i hate everything and then he found out he had cancer, and then it turned out he didn't have cancer. And Seth Rogen was in the movie. It was a few of the. It was it was one of those movies that had just a huge grab bag of wicked famous people. Like oh, uh, fucking, they was like having like a party with a bunch of famous people, and fucking Eminem was yelling at Ray Romano from across the fucking room. Like that that reminds me of uh, it was another one of those just movies that just had a ton of famous people, and it was just it was like supposed to be self aware. Yeah, uh, it was. Uh, did you ever see This Is the End? I I saw that movie twice in theaters. That movie, well, I, I saw it once, and I was just like, "What the fuck is it?" Like, because I I came into it as a guy who really didn't care for most of those actors in general. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, "What am I watching at this point?" Well, see, just but just by the nature of um, my late teen, early twenty years, uh, I watched a lot of stoner comedy. <laughs> And yeah. that was that was definitely in the same vein. I mean, it was all the same people who made all those stoner comedy movies. See, I'm not a big Seth Rogen fan, so like, I think the fact that he was like the main act guy in that movie kind of turned me away from it. Even though That's I did fair. watch it all the way through, I, I remember because Michael Sarah dies really early in the movie. 
Yeah, in a very goofy way. Michael Sarah in that movie was fucking hilarious. Like, I, I love well, the way that they, and I'm pretty sure the way that they determined like the personalities of all the people who were definitely going to die was they literally had like a hat with a bunch of random shit. Like Michael Sarah pulled like coke addict out of his pocket, out of the hat or whatever. Like it's just like a bunch of goofy shit like that. Like I, I just love the way that they handled that. It was so funny. Craig Robinson is fucking hilarious too. Yeah. It was just such a bizarre, <laughs> bizarre movie. Um, mm. I do remember the drug scene. The drug scene was funny where they just do all their drugs and just Gundam style, which is like, yeah. this dates this movie immediately. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things about that movie that I really enjoyed. And I love how like they spoiled the ending of the movie at the very beginning. Yeah. Did you catch that? Yeah. How like they're Didn't... talking about making Pineapple Express 2 and he's just like, oh yeah, and, like at the end, Danny fucking eats me. I don't know. It's just something fucking crazy like that. And at the very end, fucking Danny McBride becomes a cannibal and eats james franco yep um then there's also like they got the backstreet boys back together in that movie for a song <laughs> for no reason that was fucking great that's like fucking um fucking in sync getting back together for um the fucking uh the trolls movie <laughs> that came out recently that's so bizarre <laughs> but yeah i mean there was this is the end um Pineapple Express, I've watched a million times. Um, trying to think of some other ones. Um, I watched Half Baked a few times. That was, I was a pretty funny movie, but it, I, I mean, it had a lot of funny parts, but it wasn't my favorite. Stone. I remember. Uh, I remember Super Bad when that came out because that was the movie that like both made and kind of ruined Michael Sarah's career. Yeah, that was the one that kind of like set him in stone as like the typecast of just like the awkward yeah <laughs> awkward i look really young so i keep getting the cast as a young person that is a really good film it's just super of its time i guess is the best way to explain it mm -hmm. um yeah that one that one's another one that's only good for like one or two watches and then after that it just well, yeah once you, once you know all the jokes <laughs> once you know all the jokes it's like yeah mm -hmm. i don't need uh, to watch this again Zombie Land was really fun. I like that movie a lot. Uh, I actually just uh, while we were in Florida, we watched the second one, and um, I was actually pleasantly surprised. I like that one a lot. Hmm. Zombie Land's a really fun movie. I fucking Woody Harrelson is the shit. I was trying to think. Um, uh, maybe an unpopular opinion, but uh, Will Ferrell might be one of my least favorite actors. <laughs> I mean, that's reasonable i think a lot of people are in that camp and it's not even him i just think his movies like it might just be the movies he's attached to i just don't find funny i think it's just like i think everything he's cast for really leans really hard into his saturday night live history yeah and <laughs> they kind of like specifically write the roles as if it was like a saturday night live skit yeah i, I see that like when I think Will Ferrell, like the one film of his that I still like, and it's pretty obvious why, but uh, I love Talladega Nights. Yeah, that's that's a classic. I love that. My, movie. my my favorite thing is like you'll get those snooty uptight NASCAR fans who are all like, "This movie's an embarrassment," but then you'll get the actual drivers being like, "This movie isn't a comedy; it's a documentary." Because <laughs> <laughs> they're like, "This is real." That's because hilarious. I mean. Obviously, it's fluffed up, but a lot of them are like, "Yeah, this is how we are." Yeah, that's that's fucking hilarious. My my I favorite totally part of that, that my favorite part of that movie is like early on where he's like getting his first interview and he's like his hands just keep raising up. He's like, "I don't know what to do with my hands." And like, <laughs> that's one of my favorite jokes because I can see that actually happening. And like, if you actually were like getting interviewed like that, you just <laughs> you would know what to do. <laughs> I've made that joke reference so many times in my life. It, it, you know, what's funny is when um. When Cindy was working at Stop and Shop, she made that that reference. Yeah, nobody nobody had any clue what what she was talking about. Oh yeah, all, they were all young kids that have never seen fucking Talladega Nights. <laughs> My favorite too is like uh, anytime I see like an obnoxious sticker on somebody's windshield, I'm always like, like this sticker is wildly inconvenient and dangerous. But damn, do I like fig newts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, one of my favorites is I'm gonna come at you like a spider monkey. He's like, oh yeah. By the way, I've got two two uh, 
like two two grams of like uh south cuban like heroin or something under this car and you got it you got to drive and he's like by the way don't try to snort these lucky charms <laughs> kitten get off so, the table get down there you go I don't usually record at home. The cat's usually not a problem. <laughs> it's all right. I have to deal with Tilly every GNC episode, so. Yeah. Well, at least Kitten isn't yelling into the microphone. Oh, Tilly doesn't yell into the microphone. Alex forces her to yell into the microphone. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not blaming Tilly. Don't get me wrong. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, yeah, Talladega Nights is great, though. That's that's like probably one of my the only Will Ferrell movies I really still enjoy. Yeah, I mean, I I still like some Will Ferrell movies. There's, there's some roles that I definitely liked him a lot. It, like, um, I loved him in the Lego movie. The Lego movie was great. Yeah. Oh, that was one of those just, like, big grab bags of, like, actors that did really well. One one last Talladega Nights joke I just remembered that's great. The the scene where he's starting to get big, and there's, like, the girl in the crowd who's like, hey, driver, and she lifts her top off. And I just love his line of, please be 18. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that is very relatable. For real. Uh, that's so funny. Yeah. As a classic. Um, so I know you don't really have much of an affinity for Disney, but were there any any Disney movies that um that you watched a lot as a kid? Um any I mean, yeah, one we... in particular that that you liked and played a lot? Um I'm trying to think because we we had a bunch of them like treasure planet was on a lot and i remember not realizing treasure planet was just a futuristic version of a of a treasure island back in the day yeah uh which thinking about it now i don't think that movie got its fair shake yeah i definitely i i agree with you um to, and to be honest, I'm one of those people who didn't really give it that fair shake. I remember I watched it once or twice, and I don't know, for whatever reason, it didn't really catch me. But, like, looking back on it, it was probably one of the more entertaining movies. Yeah. I mean, it, they did a re- it's a really good adaption of it, especially, like, a futuristic take. Mm-hmm. Um, Trying to think another one that I remember fondly. I mean, I watched the Pirates of the Caribbean films, like, all the time. Oh, yeah, those are... That that first movie freaked me out though. The first time I watched it with the fucking skeletons and shit. Yeah, that like uh, I was still first... going through my nightmare phase at the time though. I I was at the phase of my childhood where I was having a lot of nightmares, so I saw that shit and I was like, "Fuck, nope, nope." Yeah, <laughs> I got uh, over it pretty quick though. It's a, it's a great movie. Yeah, the first one's really good. The second one's good. I, I love the third one. The third one's probably my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, the fourth one was yeah, and I still haven't seen the fifth one yet. Yeah, I. I think I started watching the movies a couple of years ago from the beginning, just because it had been a while. And I think I watched the fourth one, but I don't remember it. <laughs> yeah, it's the one with the Fountain of Youth. Yeah, I, I remember that part. I just don't remember really anything else. Was Blackbeard involved? Yeah. Yeah, so. see, I, I barely remember any of that shit. I just remember fucking Johnny Depp doing Johnny Depp things. See, I I always remember because like the third by the because I remember a lot of people were tired of Johnny Depp by the third movie, mm-hmm. and uh, the third movie he legit doesn't appear until like halfway through it. Yeah, because um, it's like because he uh, he he got sucked down with the black pearl at the end of the dead man's chest. Yeah, I get eaten by the kraken. Yeah, <laughs> um, but I remember because it's like you you watch the third movie at World's End, you're like, wow, how refreshing! Johnny Depp's not here. Uh, we can actually get some. Lot without his insane goofiness which the shenanigans at the time you, you were annoyed man but in hindsight you watch those movies again you're like he kind of makes those movies yeah um, i don't know how disney is gonna try and make those try and make another one without him it's just not gonna work yeah sorry not. guys but it's just <laughs> they're, not, not even they're not the or they're, they're gonna eat crow and get him back but um well, well i mean if he's a man of his word, it's never going to happen because he plainly said, I'm not fucking with Disney anymore after what they put me through. True. So, uh, money changes a lot of people's opinions, though, but uh, we'll wait and yeah, see on that. I don't think he's hurting on money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you never know. But um, my favorite is, though, in the third one is like you spend like half the movie without him and then he finally does appear and there's fucking 40 of him on screen at once. Yeah, that was in that. <laughs> that was definitely a 
funny bait and switch. It's just like, oh, no Johnny Depp in this movie. Oh, there's like 80 of them. Yeah. <laughs> I just love when he picks up that like hermit crab rock and like his first instinct is to lick it. And I'm just like, all right. <laughs> Dehydration is a, it's a crazy thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That whole scene was a giant drug trip. The fucking peanut. I still remember in the first one with the, uh, when they're on the rum runner Island and like they they get fucking wasted the first, uh, the first night and then he wakes up the next morning and just smells the fu- the rum burning and he's like he's like why are you burning all the rum <laughs> why is the rum gone <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, a goofy uh, film. it's too funny um yeah for me the fox and the hound was a big one for me i watched that one so much um, oh yeah i'm i'm on the uh the record of um I, I hated Bambi. That was my least favorite movie back in the day. I didn't care for it as a kid, um, but my daughter loves it, so I've I found an appreciation for it, for what it is. That's, un- that's understandable. I thought it was boring. It, yeah, I, I mean, it's still not a movie I'd go out of my way to. Like, there are a couple of Disney movies I would watch See, on my own. Not many, but I was. Kate, what, I was going to say I was the shithead growing up who like. Everyone be like, Bambi's a beautiful movie. I'm like, the most entertaining scene is the scene where the mother dies. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was that asshole. For real. Um, Fantasia is one, though, that's like, it's just timeless to me. Um, yeah. Like, I, I I can sit down and watch Fantasia. I mean, it also has like, it has a special significance to me as well. Um, it was one of my grandfather's favorite movies. Mm. And, uh, I hadn't seen it for a long time since I since I was a kid. <clears throat> and I don't know, it must have been two or three years after he died. I watched it for the first time in like 20 years. And I, I don't know if it's going to seem a little bit heavy, but like watching it in, in the circumstance that I did helped me kind of like accept his death in a way. Yeah. Um, it's just and it's just an incredible piece of art like mm. it's one of the few disney movies and it's it's an old ass movie dude. the moves movies 15 years away from being 100 years old and yeah. it, it holds up it's it's a really good movie the broom scene is still one of the most iconic things in that movie i believe for sure for sure um I'm trying to think of another uh this one's technically Disney in a sense, but uh, did you ever see Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Oh, of course. That's a classic. That, that is just a technical marvel still to this day. Just the whole yeah, Especially like, the... when it came out, too. Oh, yeah. I love um... shit, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, who played uh, the main character? Uh, the the detective guy? I, yeah. I couldn't for the life of me tell you. Uh, this is going to bother me because he was, he was freaking Mario in the Mario Brothers movie, too. Was he? Yeah, and he hated every moment of it. I'll bet. <laughs> uh, how c- I'm blanking on his name right now. One second. I I never bothered to look up the actors for this movie, so I I wouldn't know. Uh, Bob Hoskins. Bob Hoskins. That's his name. Mm-hmm. He, he is an um, excellent actor, and I love him in, in uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. He nails that role. Yeah, back when people could be drunks in Disney movies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that movie. <laughs> That that movie too is really iconic to me, especially like there's legit a scene in that movie with Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny on screen at once. Yeah, that was I think the only one of the only other times that they ever got away with doing that was in um what Looney Tunes back in action. Or was it no, uh, something like that? It wasn't that. It was something. It like was. It. I don't think it was Looney Tunes back in action. I but know, I know um, there was a movie along the same lines with the same kind of like real life slash cartoon mashup that did a similar thing. I know. Um, another iconic scene in Who Framed Roger Rabbit is the piano scene with Donald and Daffy Duck. Yes. Yes. Like that scene is just insane to me. Uh, they, they, a lot of uh, the, the animation in that film is just honestly the best part of it. What was the movie where uh, it would have been after? Do, like, do you remember the live action Scooby Doo movies? Like the original two. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first the first one is amazing just because they made Scrappy Doo the villain. Yeah, um, but I just like that 
I remember specifically, I don't remember what movie it was, but it was one of those like cartoon real life mashup movies. And it was a scene where like cartoon Shaggy was like, I don't know, like threatening to like beat up the 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 live action Shaggy for some reason. It's just like you, you you did me dirty or something like that. I don't remember what movie it was, but I I just remember loving that scene. Uh, we mentioned it earlier, but Looney Tunes back in action. That was we we also mentioned Brendan Fraser. I'm pretty sure that movie ruined his career for a while. Yeah, yeah, that movie's so bad, but also kind of amazing. Yeah, well, I mean. I don't know. It's there's a lot of movies from that time that just. Do you know the story behind that movie and like how it was originally supposed to be something else? No. So you know how there was Space Jam and Space Jam was huge. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what I was thinking of. Uh, that was the one with like the basketball and the. Yeah, but I was saying maybe that's what I was thinking of with the Scooby Doo thing. Maybe I don't remember. But um, anyways, continue. But. The uh, my favorite, so they did Space Jam, and Space Jam was pretty big, even though the it, I get it's a meme and it's like everyone likes it because of nostalgia, but it, the movie wasn't that good. Mm. Um, they were gonna do like spin off of that, and there was gonna be there was actually supposed to be one called Race Jam, which was uh, gonna be a NASCAR themed crossover. I was gonna say the, that that title like that is a little sus, yeah, that might be why <laughs> they didn't do it. Um, especially at the what, time, yeah. It was supposed to be a NASCAR themed version of Space Jam mm. uh, with starring Jeff Gordon. Uh, they later trans that basically transformed into Looney Tunes back in action. That's why Jeff Gordon makes a cameo in that movie with his car getting stolen. No shit. It's such That's a funny. goof, goofy, uh, goofy movie overall. Yeah, that's another one I remember from back in the day, the goofy movie. Oh, the the original one with the. Max Goof just wanting to be left alone. Yep. I remember kept just catching that one on TV a bunch. And then I remember the video game, too. I think I played a little bit of that. See, um, I always preferred the extremely goofy movie. Yeah, what, uh, when he went to college? He went to college, and uh, his dad also went to college with him. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I always remember it because of the leaning tower of cheese uh, man. <laughs> Oh, jeez. And my favorite yeah. line in that film is the, like, so did you ever wonder why we always are wearing gloves? <laughs> like, just... I love those, like, super self-aware moments in those kinds of movies. Yeah. Um, You know what's a Disney movie that aged very poorly? Is um, Well, I, I could name many, but I, I, I doubt that it's the one you're thinking of. The Is it Dumbo? Is that the elephant... Oh yeah, don't. <laughs> I was gonna make a joke about song. I was gonna say songs of the self didn't age well. But, yeah, um, well, <laughs> um, there's yeah. many reasons for that. When was the last time you saw a Dumbo? I never did. Never did. Yeah, uh, well, there's a there's a song in the there's a song in the very beginning of that movie that's it would not fly today. Yeah, a lot in, of Disney. In, instant <laughs> instant cancel. Instant, not even a question. There, there's a lot of stuff in Disney and Warner Brothers stuff that you see now, and you're like, "How did that get a buy back in the day?" Yeah, because a lot of Disney movies uh, that I either hadn't seen in a long time or had never seen have been coming up over the past couple of years of my daughter being around, and uh, I, I've learned some things about old Disney. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like you grow up and you're like. You hit that point of um, adulthood where, like, you get all of those subtle jokes they would put into children's stuff to, um, and to basically for the parents to get one every now and then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, the beginning of that Dumbo movie did did not age well at all. It's uh, pretty racist. <laughs> if you know, you know. There's <laughs> a lot of racism in old films like that yeah now. but this one was like really explicitly racist yeah <laughs> like like not even any way to fucking like even make an argument against it like <laughs> yeah um, i don't know which was worse disney or warner brothers because they were both pretty bad yeah oh um, uh, they we've gotten much better over time but my god yeah for sure um so uh what's like what are some of your go-to feel-good movies? 
like you know you just want to put something on to just kind of like you're having a bad day and you just want to throw something on that'll make you feel good um if i'm ever like having a bad day and i need just something stupid to watch i'll put on like days of thunder or something like that Mm -hmm. Uh, that's that that's like the original nascar movie okay um it's basically top gun but with nascar all right that's fair (laughs) um it's just a cool story like it's basically a a subtle it's it's like a, it's based on it's heavily inspired on the story of the driver Tim Richmond, mm. um, and how he be, how he came to NASCAR. But it, it's just a cool like uh, comeback story, feel good story. There's a ton of uh, Robert Duvall completely like steals the show in that. Even though it's a Tom Cruise movie, uh, Robert Duvall steals the show in that fucking movie the entire time, like with all of his scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, th- that's a fun one. I'm trying to think another feel good movie. Um. If I ever need something like easy to watch, that's like a good, like kind of like junk food action movie. I'll put on like Batman beyond return of the Joker. That's a classic. That's a great movie. Yeah. We okay. haven't really touched too much on animated this, so far. Yeah. I was kind of trying to save the superhero stuff for like later. Cause I figured that would be something we'd hop onto. Yeah. Um, for sure. Yeah. That's another good one. There's one other film that I like to put on when I'm, I just need a good movie. Um, well, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to think now. Uh, on Naruto the Last, I like to put on every now and then. That's another good one. That's a pretty good, like, yeah, I don't know if wholesome is the right word, but I mean, it's because cl- I mean, the close enough for really government work. <laughs> yeah, the ending's very wholesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of my go-tos when I just want something that'll just make me feel good is um, Stand By Me. Mm. You know, that's a great movie. Um, I know I mentioned in a recent episode that I watched Fry and Gr- Fried Green Tomatoes for the first time recently, and that was a really good movie that, like, mm. was one of those kind of, like, heartwarming type of stories. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to think. Have you ever seen... Uh, I just remembered this movie today, actually, when I was looking looking around trying to figure out stuff. Did you ever see Radio? Radio. It was. It's a true story, or based on a true story. Um, I'm not sure if I did. It's been a long time since I've seen it, so I don't remember it very well. But I I remember I watched it a lot when I first saw it because I liked it a lot. It was a very very good movie. Um, I can't. I remember a lot of the specifics, but it involved a mentally challenged guy getting involved in a in some sort of um, getting involved in a football team in some way. I don't remember if it was like a coaching situation or something like that, but it was one of those kind of like you know, you know, down in his luck, mentally challenged guy kind of rises up and finds his place, you know. Hmm. Um, and it, it was a really heartwarming movie. Uh, I need to watch that again. It's been way too long. Um. You know, it's a movie that I, I think could have done a lot better, um, especially with the, the the lead actor that they had for it. And I, I wish it had done really well because uh, I loved the book version was uh, Hearts in Atlantis. Okay. Have you ever seen that one? I have not, but I've heard of it. It's a, It was based on a Stephen King story called Low Men in Yellow Coats. Um, and it's it's technically a Dark Tower story. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though it's kind of like loosely connected. Uh, there's a, the, actually the character played by Anthony Hopkins makes an appearance in the dark tower books. Okay. Um, but it's just, uh, I don't know. I, those kinds of like childhood stories of Steve, Stephen King's really good at writing about childhood. Um, yeah. Which, you know, obviously it stand by me, um, parts of Atlantis, like the, those kinds of like childhood stories. He just understands childhood in a way that a lot of, writers kind of lose you know a lot of people lose that along the way and just Mm. for some reason he never did um so those those kinds of stories that he writes always hit me in a certain way for sure i think another big uh feel-good movie i i love to put on is uh your name that's one i i still need to see i know we were were talking about that recently well yeah because the uh the the freaking uh clickbait article that was going around about the uh the uh one of the 
producers of the mm-hmm. film got caught with the uh, CP and yeah. um, the, they wrote it as like one of the creators and everyone was like, no, and then it's like the, immediately people were like, oh, good. It's not it's not Shinkai. Don't worry. It's one of the no name producers. That doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah. But still all the titles, like the freaking clickbait titles made it sound like it was like Shinkai and everyone was like, no, not another one. Yeah. <laughs> got enough of that. It's kind of sad that I have to I have to say not another one, but yeah, no kidding. Yeah, your um, name's a big a big one for me though. That's probably my favorite anime film. Yeah. Uh Ponyo is another good one that I Ponyo. I mean oh, the... at this point I've seen it way too much, but still <laughs> it's still one of those movies. It's it's still good, even though I've, I'm sick of it at this point. <laughs> one one of my my favorite parts about doing that Ghibli retrospective was getting to see The Wind Rises. The Wind Rises, I think, is my favorite Ghibli. It's honestly one of my favorite films of all time. Like, that is such mm-hmm. a great film. Yeah. Um, we mentioned it already uh, in passing, but The Iron Giant. Uh, the Iron Giant was such a good film. Yeah. That was nobody of, watched it. That was one of my all times when I was a kid. I fucking loved that movie. I watched it so many times. The ending still, I don't, we always joke saying I don't have a soul because I don't really cry. That is one of the few endings to a film that gets me emotional. Not enough to mm-hmm. cry, but enough to at least like, kind of like, you get the lump in your throat kind of feeling. Oh yeah, for sure. There's uh, a lot of movies a- that affect me. And that like, there's a lot of movies too uh, that didn't used to hit me that way. And now they do. Mm-hmm. I think it's just one of those things with age. A uh, big one for me. I guess we can start transitioning into superhero films because there's just so many to talk about. But um, mm. a big one for me that like always like gives me that lump in the throat is uh, Death of Superman. The um, uh, the the later one that they did, not the original Superman Doomsday. Yeah, I I, I remember watching like the original Superman movie, and maybe bits and pieces of that like Superman revival movie. Mm-hmm. You know the one with like the the iconic bullet in the eye that crumples up thing. Um, yeah. But aside from that, I I don't really have much experience with su- Superman movies. So Death of Superman, that's the animated one. Okay. That it's part of the uh, that animated universe that they were doing for a while, like uh, mm-hmm. like with Son of Batman and uh. Okay. Uh, they, they adapted the Death of Superman storyline and like. That, the the two it's a two parter it's death of superman and uh reign of the superman mm-hmm. um the ending of death of superman just fucking gets me every time because it's like it is they it's really they there's i don't think they've ever truly captured how like iconic the actual comic was with that scene mm-hmm. but um the way they did it in the the death of superman film so well done like it it hits you just super hard because you're like damn yeah that was sure. rough. Even though you know he's coming back in the next film, it's like it still hits you like holy shit. Yeah, that's fair. Um I'm trying to think. I, I most of the ones from that that run of animated movies I watched were usually Batman movies. Um there's a few other ones that I saw, like that so the Flashpoint movie, which I like that one a lot. I hated the art style in that fucking movie though. That was my like biggest problem with it. Yeah. Well that and I hate <laughs> It's, uh, this is getting into comics, but I absolutely hate Flashpoint. Just not for the story itself. The story is very good. I just hate what it led to. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of like uh, it's a cheap way to just reset and just do different things. That then, especially because in hindsight, we realized how bad <clears throat> the new Fifty Two was. But yeah, um, um but yeah. I mean, there's the uh, there's the old Tim Burton Batman movies. Those are still. Batman 89 and Batman Returns still hold up to me. I mean, the, um, those, even just like the the two that came after that too, like it was crazy how many different actors they were pulling for these movies. Oh yeah, well, I mean, like Michael Keaton, I still think is my favorite Batman. Yeah, that's that's um, what I think of when I think live action Batman. He just was so good in the role. Like he, mm-hmm. he really kind of had that done, even though Batman and Batman 89 is like a terrible Batman when you think about it. He just yeah, fucking but, throws people off roofs and like kills people left and right. It's like holy the shit. Go- the goddamn wing cape thing that he does like every five 
minutes like where yeah. he just fucking throws the cape up like wings every five minutes like, like that <laughs> is when i watched that movie i realized how often he did it it was just so ridiculous that that's a movie that like you really gotta like take away all your knowledge of batman and like your and just look at look at it face value and it mm. makes it so much better because like to me one of the most ridiculous scenes is the scene where like batman's coming in on the bat wing and then like mm. uh the joker pulls out that single revolver and just shoots it down with one shot <laughs> i mean jack nicholson nailed that role like the oh, joker's sure. the joker is such an interesting role because like it is such an easy role to screw screw up mm-hmm. like we learned with uh suicide squad yeah the freaking jared leto but um <laughs> most times more than not like they masked they got it mastered like uh the, the people who play him because mm. like Caesar Romero, like the classic like TV series one was great because mm. he was a, he was a great comedy Joker. Didn't even shave the mustache, just painted over it. Yep, um, he refused uh, to shave the mustache. Jack Nicholson was great. He like he he was really good at as, as a dark Joker. And then uh, I mean Heath Ledger just like now Heath Ledger is like the ultimate dark Joker, just sadistic. Like I'm gonna make this pencil disappear. <laughs> it's like holy shit. I fucking loved that scene the first time I watched it. Like that was just like this is this is the shit right here. I love this. Like um, when he bur- burns all the money, he's like, it's not about the money. It's about sending a message. Hmm. Yeah. Um. He got too into that role, though. I'm convinced. Yeah, a lot of people have speculated that that's kind of like what caused his death. Yeah. Was get, getting too absorbed into that because actually there's a is a clip you can find on YouTube or the internet. I don't know if it's still on YouTube or not, but it's a scene of, uh, it was Jack Nicholson walking down like some steps from some, he's doing some sort of event or whatever. And someone came up and told him about Heath Ledger's death. And he just kind of like shakes his head a little bit and he goes, I warned him. Yeah. So it's just like one of those like speculatory things. Like it's just something about playing the Joker or something about playing somebody that, tapped i still crazy. think in, it does something to you i mean great film but like jo- joaquin phoenix holy shit that movie is it deep <laughs> i i haven't seen it oh you still haven't seen the joker movie no i haven't I, I won't i won't spoil it but my god that is a dark movie yeah it's but it's just one of those things like the joker is one of those characters that just fucking like it's kind of like um I don't know how familiar you are with uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. I know. I've seen a couple of them. Uh, well, there was this whole thing. Have you ever seen Wes Craven's New Nightmare? I, I've only seen clips of it. I've never seen the whole thing in full. <clears throat> well, the whole concept of that movie is... Um, I was really into Nightmare on Elm Street for a, a point in my teenage years. Um, but there was... Uh, the whole idea of that movie was it, it took place in, like, the real world kind of yeah where it was the actress from the first movie and she was herself in in the movie and like you know she was going and having conversations with Wes Craven and with um uh I'm blanking on his name the original actor for Freddy Krueger um good question I don't know why I'm blanking it's I feel like an idiot (laughs) because I used to watch those movies all the time <clears throat> um but it was the whole concept was like it was like the real world or whatever and it was one of those whole the demons that we believe in kind of manifest and take shape and they like kind of assume the visage of whatever oh, robert robert england. robert england yeah they kind of like the the real demons kind of take the visage, the, 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 the raiment of um, what people tend to fear the most. Mm. Uh, and in that movie, like the context of it was at the time, Freddy Krueger was, was the one. So the demon manifested itself as Freddy Krueger was doing Freddy Krueger shit, the real world. Um, and that's kind of the way I, I look at some of these roles like the Joker, where it affects people on that mental state. When they get really, when they let themselves get lost in the role, it affects them on a certain level that just 
<clears throat> well, that's why I still think to this day the best Joker that there's ever been was Mark Hamill because he just never got lost in the role. Yeah, well, I think that's part of it with um, voiceover. You kind of have a little bit of that disconnect. True. He, like, it, there's just something about Mark Hamill's performance, though, that, like, to me is, like, when you think the Joker, I just think that voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Like. And that laugh. The laugh, like, it, well, it, it's actually a combination of things. It's Mark Hamill's voice combined with Kevin Conroy's Batman. Yes, for sure. Like, those two just, like, worked so well together. Like, to the point where, like, before he uh, passed away, I remember there was a long point of time where, like, Mark Hamill had retired from the role, but, like, he would come out of retirement if, like, it was, like, a Kevin Conroy role. He'd be like, oh, is Kevin doing it? Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it, too. Yeah. Because Yeah, they it was were definitely just, a, it was a match made in heaven. <laughs> they were buddies. They were basically buddies in real life at that point. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't work with somebody for that long and not end up having some sort of good relation with them. The coolest thing ever was when uh, the CW did that whole, like, Crisis on Infinite Earths mm-hmm. uh, special, and they actually had, like, uh, evil Bruce Wayne at one point, who was, like, an older older man, and they actually got Kevin Conroy to play him in real life. Really? Uh, man, yeah. I, I need to catch up on the Arrowverse. He got to play, he got to play bat like Bruce Wayne in real life once and it was perfect. That's awesome. See, that's the thing. I love Mark Hamill in the in the Flash series. All right, he yeah. played the trick played the trickster. He's basically just doing the Joker, but in real life. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty that crazy. Flash that Flash series was really good. I just I'm not a huge Barry Allen fan. I'm more of a Wally West guy. Well, I mean Wally West becomes a part of the show eventually. It's 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 the other Wally West. It's not the uh, the original one. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I enjoyed the series for what it was. Yeah, See, the thing no, it's, I, it's I'm fine. Not, I'm just, I'm a stubborn 90s Flash fan. I, I love that era of Flash. I understand that. I, I'm just, I'm, it, it's kind of like how, um, I look at it the same way as Final Fantasy is I don't have that kind of attachment to it. Of That's people fair. who grew up with the comics and stuff. See, um, I'm like, it, it's kind of like with like Green Lantern where like, I, I'm always like, I, they always use Hal nowadays, but like whenever I think of Green Lantern, I still think like John Stewart because mm-hmm. he was in Justice League, or even uh, even Kyle Rayner because he was the comic book uh, Green Lantern for the longest time. Yeah, um, yeah, I still have this like faint hope in my mind that one day we'll get a live action Batman Beyond movie. And um, did you see that like Michael thing Keaton. going around? I want Michael Keaton to be the old grizzled Bruce Wayne. That especially would, now that especially now that Adam West is, is dead. I know. Uh did you ever see um there was that trailer going around? I guess like the studio that did like Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. They actually made a like proof of concept Batman Beyond film that Warner Brothers basically like was like, this is awesome, but it'll never happen. But why though? Because Warner Brothers is annoying. Batman Beyond is like my favorite version of Batman. I don't know if that's controversial it's, to say, but I fucking loved Batman Beyond. I wouldn't. A lot of people like Batman Beyond Batman because he it's basically Spider Man Batman. Yeah, it has so much potential. Um, it could have gone so much further than it did. It was. I think the problem is DC and Warner Brothers just doesn't know what the fuck to do with Batman Beyond. It's just it's just Batman. I mean, shit. You could you you could just set it today. Because See, the original it, Batman was like kind of like 60s, 70s. Like that's kind of when it took place. It was, you could easily just set it today. They've tried to do a Batman Beyond comic for years now. And like every time they do it, it's always, they they overcomplicate it so much to the point where it's just so not fun to read. I don't know. It's, what, whatever happened to the original writers of the series? <laughs> just get them. Uh, God knows what they're doing now. I don't know. I'm just saying. It has a lot of potential, and you got to fucking take advantage of it. Do it now while we still have some of those old Batman actors that can fucking play old grizzled Bruce Wayne. See, what what always makes me laugh is uh, uh, Terry uh, Terry McGinnis was played by uh, Will Friedle, mm-hmm. uh from, from uh, Boy Meets World, of all things. No shit. Um, he was also uh, Ron <clears throat> Stoppable in Kim Possible, which to me is always hilarious. Jesus. <laughs> uh, among uh, many other roles. Uh, he was in a house Moving Castle as well. Oh, no kidding. He played one of the sketchy guards at the start of the film. Wasn't Mark Hamill in that too? 
Or am no, I thinking Mark Hamill. He was the Castle in the Sky, right? Yeah, he was in Castle of the Sky. Uh, you're you're yeah. thinking of uh, Christian Bale. Oh, okay, yeah. He was in uh, Hal's Moving Castle. I gotcha. He he was Hal. Actually, weren't were both of them in the Her- the Boy and the Heron? Yes. Yeah. Still gotta watch that. It was a good movie. It was bizarre I've, I've at heard. points. It was bizarre at points, but I mean, it's a Ghibli movie, so you kind of have to expect that. You know who a great Joker was? Who's that? John DiMaggio in uh, Under the Red Hood. I I I I have that movie on DVD, but I haven't watched it yet. I didn't know he played the Joker. He, it's the most uncanny thing the first time you hear it, but he does such a good job. I believe it. I I bet he could do a good job with that. Um. He yeah. He was in a. He was Joker in, uh, Under the Red Hood. Batman was played by a uh, Bruce Greenwood, who I think is like my second favorite Batman. Mm-hmm. Like behind uh, Kevin Conroy, he just like has a great voice for that character. I gotcha. Like he he was so good in that movie that they brought him back for Young Justice. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't ever ever watched Young Justice, but I always heard good things about it. I always heard that it was like Teen Titans as it should have been. Um, I mean they're they're different. They're different groups entirely, mm-hmm. comic wise. Uh, Teen Titans was very clearly they wanted to make an anime. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, I mean, the, it was the, definitely the, very anime inspired. The creator of Teen Titans, I should say, wanted to make an anime. Yeah. Um, but yeah, aside from that, I mean, I I remember growing up on the the original Sam Raimi Spider Man movies. I still love those movies, even though my favorite is like whenever they cut back to a uh, scenes of a uh, Peter in high school, and then you got the very clearly 40 year old woman playing a high schooler in the background. Yeah, right. Like I love shit like that. Like that's For really real. funny to me. It's one of those two um, thousands things that just yeah always happens. Nineties and two uh, thousands. Spider-Man one and two are classic. I st- I even like Spider-Man three even though it had too many villains in it. Yeah. They definitely they were trying to do too many things in Spider Man three, but they did not need Venom in that movie. Like that movie would be so much better if it was just Spider Man and Sandman. True, but, I, but first of all, I understand why they wanted to put him in there because he's such an iconic Spider Man villain, and he wasn't in either of the previous movies. And if True. they were only intending to do three movies, then now was the time. Well, they were uh, going to do a fourth movie, and then Sam Raimi uh, quit. Yeah, um, but I will say. Uh, now that I'm of an age where I realize that Eric Foreman is Venom, I yeah. think that's pretty <laughs> fucking hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my favorite part of that movie is is Peter strutting down the street in his emo walk. That's yes. still my favorite. Bully Maguire and all I the memes that come with it. Jerry Maguire is my favorite Peter Parker, even though he was he's like he was too old for the role then. Mm-hmm. Um, I still like it. Like I still love. Spider-Man Far From Home. I think it's it's either Far From Home or No Way Home. I, no Way Home I, I is the newest think. one, I think. I haven't the one seen with... any of the new Spider-Man movies because I... You know, the MCU is such a fucking... Yeah. It sucks because if there's one movie you want to see, you have to watch like fucking 20 movies to get to it to have the context to understand what's going on. Yeah. Um, whichever one was the one that brought back like all the Spider-Mans in one film. Yeah, uh, that was that was the newest one. Yeah, so uh, No Way Home, I think. Yeah. Um, that one I love just because, like, J- Jerry Maguire and uh, Andrew Garfield stole the show in that film. Mm-hmm. Like, Andrew Garfield, like, straight up, like, redeemed himself from the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Yeah, um, for sure. And then the just awkward, like, adult Peter Maguire show. Uh, yeah, Peter Maguire, that's his name. Uh, Jerry Maguire showing up was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely... Oh, that- <laughs> That and William Defoe back as a, a Green Goblin. That needed to happen, for sure. There was no way they could start bringing back all all the Spider Man and all the villains. Bringing him bring back, back, the guy who played Doc Ock was great. Um, they got they got like pretty much all those guys back, and they they all I love that they all had redemption arcs. In that movie, yeah, oh, that's cool. Did it, did they bring back James Franco? Uh, I don't think he came back. It was only the the ones that appeared. Oh, that's a bummer. James, that that was like James Franco's like breakout role. Yeah, as um, as uh, uh, Harry, Harry Osborn. Harry. Yep. 
don't know why it's blanking for a second there. But that's like that's what I know him from. Like I've seen him in so many movies since then. But like mm. that that was the first thing that like oh I know that guy he's in Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those are classics. I still remember Spider Man too, just because like that game, I think still persists like into to this day. I I think because uh, I've seen uh, my son playing the new Spider Man too, and I definitely intend to get to it at some point because um, it looks really fun. Um. But I, I think they took a lot from that original Spider-Man 2 game for PS2. Well, that was still like the best web, web slinging in a game for the longest time. Mm-hmm. But it sure. just made it made so much sense. That was just part of what made the game so much fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then the freaking kid who lost to their balloon like a hundred times. <laughs> you got to keep getting that damn balloon. <laughs> I lost my balloon. I was like, so bad at getting that balloon. <laughs> I just uh, didn't even buy it. I said, screw, kid. I'm not getting the damn balloon. <laughs> After the fifth one, I was like, fuck this. There's no achievement for it. For real. I'm tired of it. For real. But uh, I, I put so many hours into that game. That was such a good game. Yeah. Um, Three was all right. But once you get to a certain point in the story, you get locked in. And if, you, if you're if you not doing well, then you're just stuck there and you can't do anything. So yeah, I kind of sucked. But I'm trying to think DC Marvel, I mean, had great films. I, that's just the MCU is just too big. Yeah. I've only seen the first phase. I, I, I need to get back, back to it just so I can, just so I can experience all of it. Cause I, I always hear everything from like, you know, the, the was it infinity war or whatever and end game and all that. And, um, I mean, there's a lot of other movies that I wanted to see and just never got around to. And now at this point, it's like, well, I kind of have to watch them all to a degree. Unfortunately, yeah. You know, it's one of the, it's like trying to jump into like the Arrowverse of like, you know, it's like trying to start with like season six of Flash. Like that's just, you can't do that. You have to start from the beginning. You have to start with Arrow to really understand Flash. And You know what I mean? It's kind of the same thing. Well, at least until the, the Crisis on Infinite Earths mm-hmm. thing, because they kind of rebooted everything after that. Yeah. Because I, I, the the one CW show I really liked was uh, Superman and Lois. Mm-hmm. I heard good things about it. I haven't checked it out, though. Best live action Superman, like, bar none. Hmm. Fair enough. Um, In terms of DC, though, I was thinking of their movies, and, like, they're all so hit or miss. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't seen too many of them aside from the Batman ones. Wonder Woman was worth watching. I might have to check that out. I never saw uh, Batman for Superman, but I think that was because I heard so many negative things about it that I just didn't want to. <laughs> Batman versus Superman is just annoying to watch because it's so, they get so many things wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, Wonder Woman was great. Uh, apparently the Justice League Snyder Cut is really good. Uh, the f- original version, though, not so much. Yeah. Uh, apparently Aquaman's okay. Um, I've heard Shazam, the first one's pretty good. Yeah, I heard good things about Shazam. I did want to watch that one. I heard the sequel was bad, but I think they're kind of giving up on their... I think they just re, re Actually, I don't even know what they're doing with their live-action stuff anymore. They should just stick to anime. Like, there's a, I've always said that Marvel's got kind of like the, the market cornered on the live-action movies. DC should just stick to the animated ones. That's what they're good at. I will say, like, I'm pretty much done with superhero movies at this point, but I am going to watch Deadpool 3 just because I want to see freaking um, Hugh Jackman in the yellow spandex once. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch Deadpool 2. I still haven't watched Deadpool 2, but if, if yeah. fucking Hugh Jackman's coming back, then I, I have to. I have. He's, to. Wear, he's wearing the yellow and blue. It's like, you, you got to see it just once. It's just amazing. Especially with all the fucking Wolverine jokes he made in the first movie. <laughs> like, oh yeah, it's too funny. I'm just I, I gotta see that. I just gotta see him in that once, and then I can he can retire, and I'll I can die happy. That's another movie I need to watch again. Logan. That was a, such a good movie. Logan was good. I, I honestly, if that was his final role as Wolverine, I would have been happy. But mm-hmm. I am glad he's we're doing it one more time. Just yeah. For- well, if you're gonna do it one more time, that's definitely where to do it because that's just perfect. We need one proper version of Wolverine, just I would, once. I would like to see Patrick Stewart back as uh, Professor X. Yeah, I mean, he was all. I mean, they they Professor X was one of the few roles that they actually got really good the yeah. whole time. 
Um, and then uh, James McAvoy played young Professor X too, didn't he? Yes. He, he was good with that. James McAvoy is a great actor. Uh, the X-Men films are very hit or miss, but I will say like one and two are really good. Um, First Class was really good. And like Days of Future Past was really good. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think... I think first class was the last one I watched. I'm not 100 percent sure. Or was it Wolverine? It might have been. No, it was. Oh, yeah, because there was the Wolverine. That one. Yeah, the, that one was okay. I think I'm thinking of or- the Origins movie. The oh, X Men Ori- Origins. Uh, the one with the really awful version of Deadpool. Yeah, which is also played by Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> I, I think Ryan Reynolds made it his mission to fix that. Yeah, I love that they made a reference to it in the Deadpool movie too. They also referenced Green like, Lantern. He was like, shut up or I'm going to stitch your mouth shut. He's like, you don't want to do that. <laughs> My favorite is when he's like, he's going through his torture. He's like, hey, when I get the suit, can it not be green and animated? <laughs> That's too funny. Uh, yeah, De- that Deadpool movie, the first one, was it was such a treat when it came out. Such especially because it had like no that movie had like little to no budget and it was it actually got its budget slashed it during production and they still managed to pull off such a good film oh yeah it it yeah i it did it did a really good job of what i had for sure ryan reynolds oh. definitely killed it that's another one of those hit or miss actors ryan reynolds yeah yeah he's, he's good at what he does I, I haven't really seen a lot of his films though aside from like deadpool I, I've I've seen a fair amount of them because I remember seeing him way back at a uh, that college movie he did, uh, Van Wilder. Oh yeah, Van Wilder. Way back, that was like one of his first National Lampoons. Roles. Yeah, there's that one, uh, Waiting. I loved Waiting. That was a really funny movie. Hmm. If you've ever worked in, uh, worked at a restaurant before, you get it. <laughs> um. Yeah, a little later than usual. <laughs> the late the late night is starting to hit me. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I actually fucking I got one of those little um you know, those little like drink powder packet things. I got one of the energy drink yeah. ones. The thing has like hundred and twenty milligrams of caffeine in it. I, I mentioned it before we started recording, but I, I put my daughter to bed right before this and putting her to bed always makes me sleepy, so I had to fucking load up on caffeine before this. Yeah. No, I hear you. I hear you. How long have we? Oh wow, we've been going over two hours. Yeah, well, it's easy to kind of get lost in the the stream of movies. Well, it's like um, it's also just one of those things that could go on forever if we let it. Oh, for sure. Um, just trying to think. So I know you've seen some of the like main Stephen King ones. I'm sure you sure you've seen The Shining. Yeah, you've seen. Um, uh, we I know you've seen The Stand. We've talked about that. Um. Uh, Stand by Me, obviously. Are there any other Stephen King movies that you remember seeing oh, that stand out to you? Shawshank. Oh yeah, that's yeah, it's a classic. Um, uh, I probably know more of them if I saw a list. It's one of those things where it's just like I have to kind of remember. Yeah. Uh, have you seen the Green Mile? I've seen I've seen Green Mile at least once. Yeah, that one's good. Um, yeah, it's another one of those like kind of like feel good movies. I just realized we haven't talked about uh, Star Trek at all. Well, like the movies? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I kind of just assumed that we would end up getting getting to the movies eventually with our Star Trek, which we we still need to do another one of those. Yeah. What, what, yeah what, that's what, long actually, over. We meant to do that like two months ago and just never yeah. got around to it. <laughs> Sch- scheduling happened. It, it's yeah. hard now because I have to work a lot of weekends now. But Yeah, um, and, the, and the problem is like, um, it's kind of like a... Uh, an assumed thing that Cindy has to kind of be a part of those, and this we have very few opportunities where we're both available. Yeah, so it's pretty much like every other Saturday is like the only times really that we have for that. Yeah, no, I feel, I feel that especially because like um, I, I I just I was thinking about the Star Trek movies. Like, don't you find it very fascinating how like there was that trend there where like every other one was bad, good or bad. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm. I don't know if it's gonna be controversial to say, but I didn't hate it. But Wrath of Khan wasn't my favorite by any means. No, 
Like, I mean, Rex- it was fine, but it didn't. It wasn't that like instant classic to me, like it was to a lot of other people. No, out of the out of the classic, um, the the uh, original series films, the Vo- Voyage, the Journey Home, or Voyage Home is the best one. That's yeah, the the whales one. They saved the whales. Yeah, save the whales. <laughs> save the was- whales from the giant space turd. Yes, I I love that movie. That one's so great. Like that to talk about a con- like a comedy movie that isn't a comedy movie. Like that movie is fucking hilarious. I love the punk rocker on the bus that's actually secretly the, the director of the film. You know, that comes back in um, Star Trek Picard. Yeah. They, they, that guy comes back and like fucking, uh, it was a scene where Seven of Nine yells at him on, on the bus and he just kind of like, like instantly shuts down. Just, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I just, I just, I just really like that song. <laughs> he turns it off and he just kind of like shrinks into the corner. <laughs> Honestly, going back to Wrath of Khan, I feel like it's a good movie, like, regardless, especially because of the whole meta thing where they brought back that character and that whole storyline. Yeah. But um, to me, like, the most, I think the reason that film gets so well remembered is the ending, just Spock dying. Yeah, oh, for sure. It just, I don't I'm not, it, trust me, I'm not saying it's a bad movie by any means. It's still a good movie. It's just, it's not the kind of movie I want to watch for Star Trek, you know? I was more shocked that the the first one, like the mo- the original motion picture, was so meh. Yeah, agreed. Um, I mean, Search for Spock isn't bad; it's just average. I I like it better than the first movie, and honestly, to a degree, there are some things I like about it more than the second movie. But at the same time, like I, I know we'll get more into it like later on when we actually like go into the Star Trek stuff. But the the biggest thing that bothered me about that that movie uh the search for spock was how they go through this whole process of like he's going through all this to try and bring him back and in during the whole mission or whatever to do so he discovers he has a son and then the son is almost immediately killed by doc brown and uh and um then at the end of the movie, when he's got Spock back, he's like, oh, well, the, the needs of the few outweigh the needs of the many. And he's like, I'm glad to have you back, Spock, and this and that, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, but was it worth your son? <laughs> like, your fucking son died for this, and you're saying it was worth it? <laughs> like, what the fuck is the matter with you? He was Admiral Kirk at that point, too, right? Uh, yes, I think... I think, he gets to, I think that he, movie is the reason he gets demoted because they commandeered the ship to go and to go and save Spock. save the whales. Yeah, well, no, they commandeered the ship to go and save Spock, and then. Well, yeah, because then the Enterprise gets blown up at the end, and then. Yeah, they, they take uh, the bird of prey. Yep, and then that's how uh, they save the whales happens, and then he gets demoted at the end of uh, Voyage Home. Yeah, but he but in return he gets Enterprise A. Mm-hmm. the first of many letters yeah. yeah no kidding what are they up to now like f f G, well there was like there was j in uh that future episode of uh enterprise i i, I still haven't watched enterprise okay um yeah and then final frontier was meh uh six there were parts surprising. of it i liked yeah like there was there was definitely some parts of it that i liked I thought Star Trek Six was surprisingly good. The uh, undiscovered country, I think. That was the one where, like, they were trying to negotiate peace with the Klingons. Yeah, yeah, there was some good stuff about that. Um, that one was good, and then I mean, Generations. As a mess as that movie is, there is parts of it that I really do like. I I actually love Generations. I love Generations. All the car the Card Kirk stuff is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the battle between the Enterprise and that bird of prey is the dumbest fucking scene in that movie, though. Yeah, for sure. Like the, the there's no reason the Enterprise had to be destroyed there. Mm. There's no reason for any of that. Like that that epic scene where like Riker is like destroying the thing. Like I've I've seen people break it down and be like, there is like so many ways he could have averted destroying the Enterprise here, but no, we needed this epic scene of Riker going fire. <laughs> And destroying the bird of prey. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you got to have that close up of Riker saying fire. I mean, that's yeah. kind of just a staple at this point. Um, Spot lived. That's all that mattered. 
Although I will say, yeah, spot, <laughs> spot, spot lived. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I will say, uh, I'm okay with the enterprise being destroyed in that movie because that is, uh, at least in universe, the catalyst that makes Worf eventually join DS nine. True. Because, um, because part of the reason why he didn't rejoin the crew of the enterprise E was because he was on, uh, it's not, it, I think what he said was it's not home. And that's why yeah. he didn't want to go go on the new Enterprise. Like he he had a special connection to the D. Yeah. Um. So that's why he ended up moving over to DS Nine when he was still kind of trying to figure out what he wanted to do. As much as I love Enterprise E, though D was so iconic. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I mean to be fair, it lasted the whole series. So I mean, that's yeah. then like that's anytime something. a Galaxy class ship shows up, you're always like, hey, it's one of those. And. I think they did restore the D or at least uh, LaForge did in Picard. He, it was like, he was working at like the, the station where they kind of store all the historic ships. And, uh, Is that he, a retcon? Cause I thought it was confirmed that it was scrapped. Uh, not to my knowledge. I, I don't know. I don't know. It, they probably don't even remember. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'd have to yeah. rewatch it. That's, that's a lot to rewatch. <laughs> But um, first contact though, first still contact probably great. still probably the best. Yeah, that, uh, that's a great movie. I like. I'm one of the few people that likes Insurrection, even though I I will admit the plot is dumb. Um, I I like that the scale of it is brought down. Like the first two uh, Next Generation movies, they made a huge deal about how like this is like universe disaster level, but like insurrection was like no this is just like the fate of this one colony and like that's kind of what star trek is all about yeah um it, that one's good i really i mostly just like the crew interactions mostly for the, that one because of the planets affecting them all weirdly yeah uh we got that one scene of um Jordy's eyes kind of like regenerating and him being able to see like a normal person for the first time in his life like that was a really moving moment yeah, it's interesting because they scrapped his like weird like computer eyes they gave him in like um, first contact. He gets them back. Well, yeah, they come back for Nemesis, but it's like it was just such a weird thing. It's like, oh, they're we're done with these for an, a, a movie, and it's like, nope, they're back again because mm -hmm. retcons. Nemesis um, was a bizarre movie. Yeah, Nemesis. The less said about that movie, the better. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's a reason why the movies stop there. <laughs> that movie almost ruined Tom Hardy's career. Yeah. And you know what? There's a part of me that wonders if that movie did better, if we would have actually gotten a DS9 movie. <laughs> Maybe. One of my favorite quotes is like, um, there's there's a scene where they're talking about like uh, the, the many decks of the Enterprise um, E. And mm -hmm. I think a reviewer was like, the like he commented how like you know like previous like movies they had mentioned that the ship only has this many decks and they go far beyond the amount it has and he just oh, yeah. comments and goes who gives a shit and just moves on well you know there has to be at least 47 decks because 47 is like the number that they use in in star trek constantly see when i think of like nemesis i just think of that scene of picard on the fucking dune buckies and i'm like i'm like what the fuck is this movie for real I've only seen the movie once, and it was just, it was bizarre. Then you, you, you can tell that was clearly the last one that they did with that cast, because, like, obviously, um, Brent Spiner was, this before we had digital de-aging, like, he was very much starting to, like, he just could not play Data anymore. Yeah. For sure. Like, um, Michael, Do Michael Dorn, I always felt bad, because it was like, he... Must have been a bad time because he had put on the pounds before that movie. Mm -hmm. um, Riker was <laughs> uh, Riker was pretty big in that one. Yeah, he's, yeah, they all looked rough in that movie. I'm not gonna lie, Jonathan. I, you know what? Something that I noticed is all like the all the Star Trek actors that played like the ladies' men, except for Alexander Siddig hmm. or Siddig Alpha. He uh, he has a long ass name. <laughs> um, I think he's like the only exception, but all of like the ladies men of Star Trek, William Shatner, uh, Jonathan Frakes, uh, uh, what's the actor for Tom Paris? 
uh, Robert Duncan McNeil. Yeah, they all they all kind of like started packing on the pounds after the fact. Like none yeah, of them are like none of them are like like hugely obese or anything, but like they all kind of have like that old man physique nowadays. Yeah, uh, Rob, Robbie's not as bad as he was. Like he's maybe he, I mean he's just makes him look bigger. Yeah, I mean he's also always out doing films. So mm-hmm. when they're not doing a podcast, yeah, I love that. I, I need to start listening to that again. I was loving that their coverage of DS9. Mm. It's very good. Yeah, got all those movies, and then the, and then the uh, the Kelvin verse reboot. Yeah, those movies were pretty good. I liked the first two a lot. The third one was pretty good. I think I was just expecting different. I think my expectations were just in a different place with that movie, and that's why I was kind of like off kilter. I need to watch it again to really get a, a better uh, a better feel for it. When when Spock appeared at the end of the first one, I was just like, "This is this makes up for everything." Mm-hmm. When I when I saw those ears and him turn around and just was it was, just saw Leonard Nimoy, I was like, "Like this is good. Like the world is very good again." Oh, Leonard Nimoy, the world took you too soon. How many of the original actors are left at this point? Um, well, uh, Michelle Nichols died recently in the past couple yeah. of years. Uh, so we got Shatner, we got Chekhov, and we got Sulu. I think that's yeah. it. That's sad. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that's all out of the originals. Because, yeah, um, Scotty's gone. Spock's gone. Yeah, that's all of them. Hmm. I just always think of, like, that Simpsons joke with, like, the uh, the Star Trek, like... <laughs> We're very tired. And it's like they're just like old as fuck. Mm-hmm. He's like he's like, I can't reach the computer, Captain. My stuff's in the way. And he's like just like trying to reach it. Oh jeez. I wish um and, and it was like really sad too, because we lost like three DS9 actors in the same year. I know. Uh, ah, I mean, we still got all the Voyager crew, but Yeah, but the, I mean it's not like I'm wishing anything bad on any of them. I'm just saying like Voyager gets plenty of stuff. <laughs> we know what next gen gets plenty of stuff. DS9 doesn't get enough love. DS9 is the best series. Fight me. I don't care. <laughs> Which is weird because most people shit on Voyager, but Voyager gets a lot of attention. No, Voyager is one of those ones that just like. Like next gen and Voyager are the ones that definitely get the most um the most fond memories uh from the fan base. Well, Voyager also just had so many what the fuck episodes true but i mean that was kind of a common thing in star trek in general true i mean no other no other series top threshold though that's debatable did another series have the characters turn into lizards and mate uh that's still my favorite there was that one next gen episode when everyone started devolving Oh yeah, Ugh. I forgot about that. And for one. some reason, Troy was like, a like a fucking frog person. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot. Of, I I kind of blocked that one from memory. And uh, what was it? Jonathan Franks was just an ape man. Fucking that's Star weird. Trek. That's Star weird. Trek is so fucking weird. That's that's part of what I love about it so much, though, is that they can really just like kind of spread their wings and just like go nuts with the creative shit. Yeah. <laughs> You can science away pretty much anything. Anything you can't, you can science fiction away. Techno mumble jumbo. Yep, pretty much. But uh, yeah. Any other movies, or do you want to wrap this up before we? Uh... No, we could always do a follow up. I think this one's gone yeah. on pretty long. <laughs> well, I figured this would be a good like introduction to films before we actually cover ind- individual films for future episodes. Mm-hmm. For sure, but uh. Also, I'm I'm going to end up falling asleep if we keep going. So, yeah, I feel that. <laughs> uh, the tired is hitting me hard now. I'm usually going to. I'm usually already in bed by now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But hey, we got almost. We got like two and a half hours out of this one, so that's always fun. Yeah, we're actually like what an hour out from our our first episode length. That's that's, that's the closest we yeah. got. <laughs> yeah well i mean nothing will well the the christmas memories episode was pretty long too yeah that's true but uh 
Yeah. So once again, guys, uh, thanks for joining us on the Geek Addicts. Uh, you can find Geek Addicts and all the uh, major podcasting feeds within the GNC podcast feed. Um, you can also find video versions of the podcast on our YouTube channel, GNC Podcast Network, uh, along with an, the audio versions of the episodes. And uh, you can find all of our links at linktree slash the Barber Who Games. And if you'd like, you can join the GNC Podcast Network Discord server to find all info on GNC, the 3DO experience, um, geek addicts, talk gaming, anime, or just random bullshit. Uh, Kermit the Frog, water bottles, all, all sorts of weird shit. Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> Macho Man Randy Savage, yeah. <laughs> Many, many things. But uh, anyways, guys, once again, thank you for joining us. And we'll see you all later. Have a good one.